Good evening. Welcome to the March 6, 2019 Board of Selectmen meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. We will go into the consent agenda. If it will open, we'll be all set. Oh boy. I hate computers. It's just not opening. Nope, here we go again. Here, <laughs> Here's my. I'm going to throw this one out the window. It's probably been fixed. Okay, so we have uh, PR 1935, APR 1936S, AP 1934, AP 1935V for warrants. We have minutes of November 14th, 2018. Uh, we have Hadley Hearts Helping Schools 5K Road Race on April 7th. One Day Liquor License, Top of the Campus, UMass Hockey Games, Mullen Center. March 15th, March 16th, and March 17th. We have Hadley PD Part-Time Dispatcher Appointment. Henry Bai is back. Uh, First Congregational Church, Easter Service Sunrise, April 21st. And that will be on the Town Common. We have a one day liquor license for Steve's Wild Ride at V1 Vodka, 146 Russell Street. Multiple licenses for March 9th, March 13th, and oh, April 13th, sorry, May 11th, uh, and June 8th of this year. We have a one day liquor license for Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce, Pyramid Group. Margarita, Madness, Hampshire Mall, March 28th, 2019. We have a one-day liquor license for Top of the Campus, WWE event, Mullen Center, concession stand, and arena floor. Two licenses for March 24th. We have a one-day liquor license for Top of the Campus, Chris Tomlin Concert, Mullen Center, March 28th. And we have a Class 2 auto dealer license for Stephen Simcoitz. River Drive Auto Body. Motion to approve. Second. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on anything? The only thing I was a little concerned about was, and, and just because of the senior center construction and the demolition of the Hunter School, was mm -hmm. the V1 Vodka event. And if we wanted to do anything special just because of the proximity of that to the site. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any concerns there or whatnot, but I don't think it just about it sounded like there's doing. parking at the Legion. Um, <coughs> so I think they probably have made alternate parking so that they that's can what it the seems Legion. like. Last time. They did the last time too. Yeah. Okay, I mean that was my only concern yeah. of those two things. And but we can have a problem. But should we formally make sure that um, we'll have Jennifer, Jennifer check communicates with him? Yeah. And if you want to amend your motion to say subject to any order of conditions imposed by town officials for parking yeah. purposes yeah that'll cover it mm -hmm. okay. okay so I'll make a motion um, uh, to approve and, uh, and for that one item at B1 vodka subject to any further conditions relative to the parking that town officials might propose okay all in favor aye aye, aye. okay thank you we have public comments. Does anybody here this evening that has anything specific to talk about? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, we will go to borrowing authorization. We might as well get right started. Thank you. Right. David, nice to see you again this evening. Sure. Yes, I'm here with uh, And Linda, too. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't want to don't wanna neglect you, but. <laughs> Yes, I'm here with David Eisenthal, who's our Chief Financial Advisor from Unibank Fiscal Advisory Services. He has helped us in, in, uh, in our, the planning for our borrowing, and we're here tonight to sign uh, two additional short-term notes as part of our borrowing plan. Um, we, um, I did send you an email explaining why we had the two bands, and I think David can explain it a little bit more about how this fits into our borrowing plan over really what's the next two to three years as we get through these projects. 
um, I have a folder which, which has each of the, the notes, the paperwork for each of the notes that's being signed tonight, and we'll get the money in for these next week. Um, we have a, almost a $1.9 1 .9 million dollar note, approximately, um, which I'll have you each sign in four places. This is a, um, this one is due in July. July, and we have from East Hampton Savings Bank a 2.3% uh, note for for this one. And the second note we have from Eastern Bank, it's one point th oh, uh, a little more than $1.3 million. It's 2.24% and it is due in September. And if I'll send these around for each of you. Just each of you signs each note in four places, as I've shown on the tabs. But uh, David can explain a bit more while I'm, we're doing this. Okay, thank you. So, <coughs> Madam Chair, yes. um, the, re the reason the town is issuing two notes in this case, one maturing July 18th and the other September 19th, is that the July notes will be permanently financed, first. it is the plan anyway, with uh, general obligation bonds. Right now we're estimating about an $8 million general obligation bond issue, which will sell in early July, um, settling in, in advance of July 18th. The note that the town issued back in December also matures on July 18th, and that note also will be permanently retired with the bond issue. The 1.3 million that is maturing in September consists mostly of, um, well, 500,000 of this is for the library. It's the first borrowing for the library. Uh, the rest of it is sort of equipment or engineering purposes that the town expects to pay off over a few years, and the thought is to keep these in short-term notes, except for the library. The library will be permanently financed, but not until January of 2021. So that's the plan at this point. So when would you go out to borrowing for the library? Not until then? Well, there'll be temporary borrowing all along. The permanent financing would happen in January of 21. Okay. This is the Ms. first. Uh, Valerie, do you want to sit up here so you can see? Um, Does that be, okay. be easier for you? Uh, sure. She's on the finance committee. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, the, the town will be borrowing for project cash over the next uh, year and a half, uh, we would expect that the next time that the town will borrow short term for the library will be in September when the 1.3 million matures, there, we would expect that there will be some additional new money mm -hmm. for the library at that time. Um, as uh, Linda mentioned, uh, the 1.9 million notes have five full bids and two partial bids. East, East Hampton Savings came in at 2.3%. Uh, the notes maturing in September, six full bids and two partial bids. Eastern taking it at 2.24%. This was better. I think we had projected 2.6 and 2.75 mm -hmm. respectively mm -hmm. on these. So we came in yeah. better uh, than expected on both. Um, and uh, where we've put together um, a financing schedule that, um, and I expect that um, Linda and David Nixon and I will be meeting at the end of next month to really kick off the planning for the bond issue. Um, the months of, uh, well, the mid-May on to the uh, July 8th will be a busy time uh, relative to the borrowing, uh, uh, preparing disclosure, uh, working with uh, uh, s and Global Ratings, uh, getting um, all of the elements ready that need that go into a, a bond issue. Um, mm -hmm. And it will be the first bond issue in almost five years from the town at that point. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And first payment will start. Will we see like a schedule of payments we usually did before on different projects uh, yes. when payments will go out? So. Uh, yes. we'll, we'll see that coming along. There will be an interest payment scheduled for uh, January of 2020. So the fiscal 20 tax rate will reflect that 
any annual interest payment. Um, principal will not be will not start until 21. However, so uh, the major uh, impact will be in 21. So, what type of increase do you think um, the residents will see in 2020? Well, we're targeting uh, we're targeting keeping excluded debt service at 1.2 million dollars all in, okay. um, which is about a dollar twenty uh, on the tax rate at this oh. point. We, we part of the plan that we uh, the select board we worked out with the select board a couple of years ago was mm -hmm. that we would do the increase and pay off some of our short term borrowing um, and keep that steady. I know. I know it doesn't feel steady when people say their tax bills increase, but those are. But um, by reason of these borrowings, the tax rate is steady. There's other reasons that your taxes go and up. And assessments right. change. Yes, the, there's other reasons. That, yes, but as far as the impact of the buildings and that original $95 increase on the average house, that is something that we are still able to keep to. Mm -hmm. And by having that even plan where we it did the increase and said, and now it'll stay at this level, mm -hmm. by doing that, we're, we have the um, flexibility um, just in the bands that we're issuing now for the fiscal 20 debt and interest payments that uh, we have projected. We will continue to pay. We will pay the same amount of fiscal 20 as was budgeted, as was planned on, but because the interest rate went down, we're actually uh, able to allocate an additional $10,000 to pay for principal. So we don't, the, the, again, the taxes don't go up and down with these interest rates, rates and the borrowings. We got them up there, we kept them, and we're continuing to pay down as best we can. And anything that we don't pay in, into interest, we're paying on the, um, on the principal. So it's, um, it's still, it's, it's working. What we set up a couple of years ago, even with some of the increases in interest rates we have seen, um, because you were conservative in the projections initially, uh, well, I would say that what we've seen in the last 90 days since the $2.8 million ban that the town issued in December, rates, especially short-term rates, have come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, for projection purposes, we're expecting that rates will be back up by the summer, but we can be hopeful that uh, we're wrong on that and we be conservative, but uh, we're, we're hopeful that uh, this bond issue will come in in the high threes or four, four <coughs> between the high threes and four percent. Okay. And that will be the, the one in uh, July. July. And that's, and that's eight million to pay for basically the senior center. It would be eight million for the senior center, the um, fire station, the fire land, the uh, okay, school H HVAC. Portions of each. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. portions of each. That's right. Yeah. Because the remainder yeah. of the fire uh, and senior center would be permanently financed in 21. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I stand correct. So yes, we're about half financed for the uh, the senior center and the fire station. So if we do find if this continues that with, uh, I know that the bids came in under for the senior center. If for some reason the way we decide to proceed is not to borrow the full amount or spend it, we won't have borrowed it yet. So that that borrowing will not be complete until next uh, till January of 20. Mm -hmm. So we have plenty of time to, and by then we'll have the bids in on all of the projects, and we'll know where we are, and we'll know if we whether um, whether we don't want to borrow the full amount or whether you want to reallocate some of the borrowing, which I think involves going back to town meeting to make those changes, I believe, if we want if to move it to another project. But above we, a certain amount, right. yes, the town, town meeting would right. have to consider. But we, we have time, because we But it would be, for, it would probably be fall town meeting for next spring, probably 2020, um, that we would be probably looking fall. at fall. Maybe yeah. fall? Well, probably fall, because okay. right now what we have, our projections were based on a full borrowing for all projects as of January 2020. But if, if the if the bids aren't up there, if we're not going to be borrowing it, then we will want to make an adjustment down, I would think, before January. Um, so I guess fall town meeting would, would be the one. So okay. we'll be back and forth with you and the building committees and see where we stand. Uh, meanwhile, we'll have one bond, one permanent bond out of the way. We'll have taken care of the eight, about the $8 million bond, which is about half of it. 
and then it's another year and a half before we're bound, we borrow the balance, which could be seven to seven and a half million dollars at that point. And then that is all the construction borrowing. Mm -hmm. And the others, the equipment and all, we're going to continue in the short term bands because that's worked so well for us just to be able to pay down more on the principal and have that flexibility. There's no reason to put uh, any more, to put three to five year uh, equipment into a long term bond. Because we, uh, because the bands ex extend out further, you can borrow short term for more years than you used to be able to. So we can take advantage of that and, and pay those items right off in a few years and never have to go into bond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Great. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate right. it. Thank you for coming yes. tonight and explaining everything. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Do you need a formal vote from the board? It's not necessary, but it's up to the board whether they want to take a formal vote. Um, I will say that when the bonds are sold in uh, July, bond council and lock board will provide a vote that uh, this board will be asked to vote. But in this case, the Bureau, the Bureau of Accounts does not require a vote of this board because the signature of the documents. You've signed, so I think we're all set. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you yeah. before yeah. July, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> Take care now. Thank you very much. It was great. Good job. Bye, David. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, you too, <laughs> <laughs> Who's that again? Yeah. <laughs> We'll have Education Department at MSBA Grant. Yes, so we are looking, the school department is looking to apply for Massachusetts School Building Authority funding to assist with two projects. One, the girls' locker room, which was on the capital plan for this year. We also added the Univents. The Univents are not set, um, we're not expected to, to be addressed until later, but we think that the Univents actually would be perhaps a more appealing part of the project to MSBA, which is why we added them, since the town and the schools are committed to eventually replacing the heating system at Hopkins Academy, which dates back to the 1950s, and now it's extremely difficult for us to even get parts to fix them, it's costly. And they're not, they don't do a very good job of circulating the air. Ask any of our volunteers at election time how effectively they work. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you not very well. So we thought we bumped up the Univents solely for submitting what's a statement of interest to Mass School Building Authority because we thought that might make the application more attractive. What I'm asking the select board to vote this evening, and the school committee has already voted this, is part of the statement of interest. So it's not an application because they don't even know yet how much money they will have. They have no idea what projects they'll invite into the application pro uh, process. The Mass School Building Authority is the place it takes, I think it's a penny off of the sales tax, it's either a penny or a tenth of a penny. They take a portion of sales tax, they set it aside for school building projects. Every single year they look at how much revenue they have and then they invite schools to submit what's called a statement of interest. They look over all of the statements of interest and then they determine which ones are most competitive, and they look at how much money they have, and they invite people to actually apply. If you're invited to apply, and the district has done one before, <coughs> you did it for the roof project with Dr. Young. Mm -hmm. If you're invited to apply, they walk with the town, the school, through the entire project. And once you're invited to apply, you're, you're essentially getting the funds. The statement of interest, there's no guarantee at this point of anything. All the statement of interest all that is required, we will submit the final statement of interest on April 9th, and this is just a vote that is essentially, you're saying that you grant the superintendent of schools the permission to submit this. So essentially, Mass School Building Authority doesn't want superintendents going about deciding what they're going to build without asking the select board of the school committee. They're making sure that, that you know what I'm doing. So here you have it. <laughs> this, is, this is what we're doing. And if yeah. you're successful, this would still have to go through the whole capital process in terms oh of the town meeting. Oh my gosh, yes. And, and they yeah. make sure that you, so there is also, one, they're very clear in this vote that, that what they're asking you to acknowledge is there's absolutely no guarantee of funding, but also you are not bound to do anything. The voters still decide, this, you still decide what goes on the warrant, 
and the voters still decide anything. This is just um, if, in fact, it were the will of the town and the voters that you wanted to move forward with these projects, this is a way of seeing if we could get some reimbursement for that. The reimbursement, all towns are guaranteed roughly 31 cents on the dollar as a base, and then they look at aggregate income, aggregate property wealth, and there's a third thing they look at that I'm forgetting right now. They look at all those things. In your last project, you got just under 50 cents on the dollar. I think it was like 49.8 or something, roughly 50 cents on the dollar. Uh, oh, poverty is the third thing, community poverty. If things haven't changed drastically, you could estimate that that's roughly what you would get. So is that the percentage like they would reimburse you when we did the school for 63% or 69% yeah, Exactly, or unallowable so expenses. I think the last time we went to the SBAB is when we wanted to put an addition on uh, for junior, senior, uh, junior high. Was that what it was? I think that it was, was the really last time we went and actually we were turned down because our building was in too great shape. <laughs> and so they gave us uh, money to do windows and things like okay. that. But we that was the 1.3 million that yes. we got. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we weren't able to go yeah. any further than that. But anyway, it was certainly helpful for what we yeah. did. Yeah, so, so it's, yeah. Um, if you're, in, if were invited to apply after they've looked over what we would like to do, then um, it certainly, it yeah. certainly is helpful. It Absolutely. It beats paying 100%. Absolutely. So, and most of the costs associated with the projects, both the, lo both the locker room and uh, the heating, the majority of those would be considered allowable expenses. When you're doing a, a new building, there are some things that uh, these funds will not pay for. And I think we've been trying to get the locker rooms done for years. Yes. It's been on the agenda for quite some time. Yes. So. so there's a very specific vote that must be taken and recorded. And again, this is just for the statement of interest. This does not obligate the town in any way financially, nor does it obligate the state to provide the town with anything. Okay. Can I entertain I can, a motion? Yeah. I can make a motion. Having is there a certain... Motion in here? I yes. have one yeah, answer that I'll, I'll read here. Yes. Yeah, well, he heard it the other Sit night. Back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Sit back. Having happen. convened in an open meeting on March 6, 2019, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the Hadley Select Board, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, <coughs> has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a statement of interest form dated April 9, 2019, for Hopkins Academy located at 131 Russell Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future, girls' locker room, and youth events projects. These projects are the redesign and update of girls' locker room and replacement of old malfunctioning heating unit events and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Would you like me to do your agendas in the future? I could give you more votes. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me. Yeah. Yeah. That Perfect. sounds appealing. You I like think that was only two sentences. Yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yes, I would like to do it. Um, Chief Spankenable. We're still waiting for a few. We're still waiting for a few? Okay, well, we'll skip over that. Just give me the high sign when you're ready. Okay. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice you change it. <laughs> Shut this off. We'll be all set. Sorry about that. It's embarrassing. Last week it would start cleaning. All right. I don't have very many friends, but anyway. Um. <laughs> um Moody Bridge Road. Shall we 
take that in, up, up for discussion here? Sure. Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening, Chris. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you. And so would you like to update us on Moody Bridge Road? Yes, Madam Chair. We um, we are about to go out for a bit for the culvert. Based on our engineers' uh, specs, uh, the first number that we have, we're looking at 20, Two hundred and thirty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We also have a grant for the flood grant, but we cannot do. We can't begin that project if we don't have the funding for the cover. We also have um, chapter ninety money for the surfacing of the road. So uh, where we are lacking right now is the um, funding for the cover. Having talked. I spoken with the town administrator. I wanted to find out from the board if the board can authorize us or so where can we have the funding so we can proceed. We're also thinking of um, applying for a grant, a state grant for COVID. But that will not be, we may not get to know if we, if we succeed be, by, before, uh, within now, probably maybe early fall or next year. And the total grant, according to what we're told, for the state is 750000 So if 750000 is statewide, our thinking is that they may not even give us up to 50000 So that's where we are, mm. Okay. Any monies anywhere? Can I ask yes. the two chiefs while they're here? Moody Bridge, how critical is it to alternate routes for emergency response, anything like that? I mean, as far as using it as a throughway from road to road, it's not, we don't use it. It's actually a terrible idea just because of the condition it's always been in. But, you know, getting, you imagine as far as ambulance response, fire response, things like that, if you're going to take a patient somewhere. No concerns on our side because it's really only one house on the South Maple Woody Bridge side. The rest of it's on Woodward access through uh, Bay Road. Okay. Just, it's a lot of money. So I'm mm -hmm. just wondering if there's a way to maybe temporarily until we can find something down the road, um, keep it closed, table this for later. And I don't know if we can do part of the flat grant. Uh, the, you know, between say the, the the old stables there and where the road is, the the culvert's failing. I don't know if that. I, I don't know what we can work with as far as the grant money we have, but I, I'm sure we don't have two hundred thirty thousand dollars sitting around waiting to be spent. No, and I, I do think that we should apply for this new grant that's coming out, and its deadline is March twentieth. Mm -hmm. uh, as Chris said, the, the total for the state available under that program is seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. They've got to spread that over 351 communities. Um, but every little bit will help in this case. Uh, I thought we initially had money for this project. We were going to use possibly MS4 money mm -hmm. um, because I, we had talked about avoiding the use of Chapter 90 money to taking money away from repairing roads in other areas of the town for this. Um, can, I, can I ask if... Uh, Say we did get a grant for fifty thousand dollars. Is there a portion of it that could be done kind of piecemeal? You know, replace an aspect of it, or does this whole project need to be done all at once? As far as the we we cannot do the cover as a piecemeal because it goes across. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So what do you need? Two four foot pieces of pipe in there, basically. Is that what it's designed? What's the design? No, we have a sixty inch cover. Sixty inch one. Yes. No backup for overflow. There's two we in have there a, now. We have a backup for overflow. Are you going to leave that one in or are you going to yes. replace that one? Oh, we're going to leave that one. It's in probably the same condition as the other one, isn't it? Uh, this, this, uh, They're two galvanized. The, the, the two galvanized right now, we're taking them that out. We're putting the 60, and we also have another one we have. 
for my floor where I put in. What size will that be? That would be the same size of, as one of the small ones we have right there, which is 24 inches. 24? Yeah. For an overflow? The 60 is big enough to carry it. As we did the one on Tremor Road ourselves, we rented a piece of equipment for $3,000 a month. Those pieces of pipe are how much? The, you need the two one links, of, you actually need four links of yeah, pipe. The one that you did is a little bit easier than the current one that has failed, I will close it. The current that has failed is a big brook. It has a lot of fork to be done. And also we needed two head, uh, head walls. And that's the driver of the cost mainly, is the yes. size the of the pipe and the head walls. The head, the the head walls. Yes. So I don't know why, and, and why are we going bigger? Because why can't we just replace the stairs? <laughs> because if we, there is, we, don't, we if right now they have two. Uh, we can do with one 16 inch as opposed to putting two. So that's, that's how you It seems idea. like a lot of extra work when you put four pieces of pipe in and open the road back up. For probably uh, sixty or eighty thousand dollars, which we initially thought would cost. The failure at that location is uh, more than that. Also, uh, as I said, it's two galvanized pipes. What else can fail? The gravel is falling in the pipe. Well, is the least the least uh, part is what we're taking right now, based on the engineering, engineering structure design. What do you want to do? I, I'm with David. If this, I mean, makes sense to apply for the grant. Right. Um, why not? But if there's not a sense of urgency from a public safety standpoint, and I know that the people, many people who live on Moody Bridge itself, aren't bothered by the fact that. Yeah, we're not getting complaints. Yeah, we're not getting any complaints. <laughs> so if it doesn't pose, if, if we're not setting ourselves up for significant. Um, Additional costs because there was something else that might fail there, and I'm not hearing it. No, that's nothing. Yeah, so I think we push this off and deal with other matters. Do we want to put any signage or anything up that's better than what's there now, or well, dead end sign, or anything along yeah. those lines? That was going to be my um, question. Besides the fact that people drive around it anyway. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm just thinking. Do we have uh, concrete jersey barriers or something that we could replace those sawhorses at the end of? Uh, I guess it was by South Maple Street, Street. Yeah. Yeah. on that end at least to keep people from. Yeah, we could. Yeah. Because uh, even at the at the location where the profile, uh, we have concrete uh, barriers that we could could. Yes. Also, we, we also put out a signage. Yeah, that, yes. So I'm sure if we could keep people from hiding down there, the chief would appreciate that. So. <laughs> Driving off the road to get down there for some reason. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So we don't need to take a vote, right? This is just, Chris no. is just looking for direction? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, is that good for Thank you? you? Thank you, yes, that's Okay, good. well, we're not done with you yet, but we'll, we're gonna <laughs> come, come back. Come on, let me set it back. Uh, Chief, you wanna, oh, is that you? I don't know. Not, not yet. Okay. They're, not, they're walking up the stairs. They're walking up the stairs, okay. They're gonna start filing them in if you'd like. Okay, yeah. that would be fine. Thank you. Always room in the hot seat up front. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get so many friends? He paid them off. It's all family, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Both sides. I'm sorry. Everybody can come in from out there. Come on in. I see more police out there. Fire. Yeah, there's a few more coming. <laughs> <laughs> Could have called up the people in East Hampton that know you too. They would have come tonight too.
we aren't running into occupancy issues, are we? We could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. <laughs> so we have on the agenda Deputy Evan Bryant's end of probationary period. And I'll let Chief Spankin able to take that over. Yeah, so we're not letting him go. Uh, <laughs> anyway. um, anyways, I just, we don't normally really do this, but we thought it would be good for the viewing audience to actually meet the folks and actually see the swearing in. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to give a little bio like Mike does for his for his employees. We thought it would be good for people to get to know the folks that are serving them. So I wrote this up for him today and uh, Evan officially completed his one year probation on February 19th. Um, so he is officially already sworn in, but we are going to uh, reaffirm tonight. But Evan grew up in South Hadley and graduated from South Hadley High School in 2006. He comes from a long line of family members with a tradition of careers in public safety uh, on the important side, the fire side, uh, <laughs> and that'll be mom's side. <laughs> His great grandfather, grandfather, and two cousins uh, have all served as firefighters and on the police side. Uh, his father, thank you for your service, four years as a military uh, police officer with the Air Force. Uh, also uncles and cousins uh, in the police service now. Uh, he's served as both, Evan has served as both as a call force and volunteer, as well as a full-time firefighter with over 13 years of experience. Evan actually joined our call force in 2015, while he was also a full-time fire firefighter EMT on fire district number one, and I don't know where the chief is, he's over here. Uh, we have Chief <laughs> Othier from <laughs> District 1 here tonight. Thanks, Chief, for letting us steal him from you. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so he served with uh, Chief Author on South Hadley Fire District Number One, and at that time he had assisted us with the uh, assistance to firefighter grant, which unfortunately we didn't, we weren't lucky, but we spent an awful lot of hours together uh, working on that for that extremely competitive grant in 2016. <coughs> He's also served with the Barnes Fire Department uh, as a full-time firefighter, and then he was also on Fire District Number Two of South Hadley as a call force firefighter, and that's when I. First Are the division of forest fire control uh, for Hampshire County so he was the one that was up on the mountain fighting our lovely fire we had on the mountain and also assisting with all the communities with the uh, getting equipment for free which we so very much like and appreciate. Um, Evan has an extensive list of certifications that he's come with uh, that are benefiting our community today including fire officer 1-2 he's our arson investigator public fire and life safety educator fire prevention officer and he's also certified, as I am, in CPR, AED, and first aid uh, through American Heart Association. And he's also certified as a national child car seat installer, which, along with Janelle, has been very successful uh, in the department. <coughs> uh, he was also successful, again, uh, in bringing back our safe, pro uh, safe grant this year and also the senior safe, which, if you all remember, actually, the first year was in the town of Hadley, mm -hmm. the first year that they actually uh, Put out that grant was for a senior in Hadley. It was designed by our department. Uh, anyway, so he's really sunk into uh, helping out with all the uh, safety pro life safety programs at the schools and with the seniors. He uh, Evans he's passionate about his job as a firefighter and EMT, and he's really seamlessly transitioned into the role of deputy chief of a combination department. It's been a pleasure watching Evan grow in his career as a firefighter and now in his role as my second in command. Uh, his passion as a firefighter is only rivaled by his passion of family. Uh, more important than all the certs and qualifications is his family, which you see here. Uh, I would like to thank his fiance, Christy, for allowing him <laughs> <laughs> to come join us, because uh, I'm sure she's very well, as all, as all of our other family members are aware. We go out at all hours of the evening. And then also, there's another very special person, and that's Kiana, Evan's stepdaughter, who's here with us tonight as well, so thank you to you as well. <laughs> also to mom and dad and the extended Evan Bryant family, Judd family, that we'd have to have a full select board meeting to <laughs> actually, uh, <laughs> actually list. Uh, <laughs> and therefore, um, I've asked Jessica to come in, but could you please stand? And I feel like I'm getting married ahead of room. Anyways, uh, Kiana has requested to pin Evan tonight. And she's going to attempt to not stab him. So, <laughs> so in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48, Section 42, granted to me by the town meeting vote and in coordination and support of the Hadley Select Board and the town of Hadley, I do officially reaffirm the appointment of Evan John Bryant as the Deputy Chief of the Hadley Fire Department. And 
I brought the clerk in. I got some told. <laughs> 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 Raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear to faithfully and impartially perform all the duties of the post upon you as deputy fire chief in the town of Hadley? The term of fiscal year 20? 19. Or 19. Fiscal year 20. We're in 20. 20. 20. 20. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in accordance with mass fire regulations of the bylaws of Hadley in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So help you guys. Good. is that when uh, Chief Spanknable recommended Evan for the appointment, I believe that uh, he had a meeting with me and Joyce just to go through all the qualifications and everything, and we told Mike, you better get this one right. So <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, you did a fine job as well. <laughs> Thank you. You've been quite the asset to our department, and we appreciate everything that you do. You really put forth a lot of work and effort into our department, and thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. And everybody else. Yeah. Is <laughs> 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 All right, we're waiting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who's here? It was. Yeah. I was born. Who's here? Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having a good son. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> We already approved you on our <laughs> consent agenda, so you're a little late. But would you? Would you? That's okay. Would you like to say anything for helping arts? I would. I just uh, I wanted to thank the town again for uh, always supporting us, and uh, also um, I just wanted to let everybody know, like today we raised one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the schools. Um, we have contributed an exorbitant amount of new technology and software and ukuleles and <laughs> art and gem equipment. Um, so it's been it's been uh, a success. Um, we're always looking for the town's people to come out to the race because that's how we are able to, to do that fundraiser. Um, so. Again, uh, Would you just like to go over, since we're on TV, you can yeah. give the dates and the times and and how to contact to um, get onto the race and everything? Sure. Uh, it's helpingheartsforhadleyschools.org. Uh, the race is April 7th, 2019. Uh, we have open registration on the race day at 9.30 and the race starts at 10.30. Um, but you can register now. Um, all the way up until race day and on race day. On race day it goes up by five dollars, so you may want to save that extra five bucks before, before that happens. Still but getting t-shirts for the first ones that are coming? No, actually no. Uh, water bottles. Water bottles yeah. this year? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we changed it. Um, okay. We uh, wanted to give more money back to schools, so okay. we uh, cut down on our expenses and and decided to go with the water bottle option. And <laughs> you, you're all set with the police and everything? I am, yeah, we have meetings all set, meetings set up. You in on um, it? Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yep. Same, same, same route, same, same <laughs> rinse and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, yep. Okay, so, sounds so. great. We're awesome. looking forward to it again, and do thank you for all your efforts that you do and you. what gets donated to these schools and everything. We do appreciate it very you. much. You guys can check out the website. It has a list. I'm okay. working on adding more, but there's a, a list of things that we've bought for the school. So if anybody ever wants to see that or wants to dive deeper into what we've bought, the books are open. <laughs> so, all right. Sounds all right. great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Is Chipotle here? No. Nope. All right. Well, you can go ahead and <coughs> do the change Maybe of that. But Maybe I will. Don't have to okay. Do Let's do. Can we? You want to do that? <laughs> sure. Okay. So we'll do. We'll take that off the agenda there. Uh, change of manager for Chipotle. And any 
any, any issues or anything? Um, but I did attach a letter from their licensing department. This was one of the ones where they had not changed their manager and I had requested from the ABCC to allow us to, to allow them to go ahead and renew with the wrong manager and the ABCC very kindly said yes. Um, but then the communication fell apart a little bit and as you can see from the letter, they apparently did a complete turnover of their, of, of, their um, of their entire licensing department at their corporate headquarters. And it looks like they, they finally got it together and got everything cleaned up. But this is sort of just a letter to y'all explaining why there was the delay. Um, I'm not certain where the manager in question is. He was planning on attending tonight. Mm -hmm. But there are no problems that um, I saw within the application itself. Um, so that's sort of the where they are right now. Okay. Is there a motion? Can make a motion to approve the change of manager at Chipotle. Grill. Second that. Any further discussion? They they have an alcohol serving license. They do. They do. <laughs> you can get alcohol. Yeah. Really? I think yeah. it's margaritas and beer, but it isn't all alcohol. Small selection, but good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was. I just. I don't think of that place as a place to go through. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, Brown education. Okay. Can I just do one thing out of order before we get into budgets? I have um, Carlos here from Berkshire Design, and if we could just get that out of the way ahead of time and then we can get into the public safety budget. Would that be okay? Thank you. I know it would be. And Chris also. Uh, Chris Chamberlain, the civil engineer for the fire station project. Thank you. So we had a couple of things that came up and one of them was the uh, retention drainage. Uh, and what your meeting was with last week with our, our DT, DPW director, Chris Oakenberg. And uh, hopefully we have come to some resolution uh, within the last 48 hours of uh, what we can do. Uh, Chris, you did meet with David yesterday to get a better understanding of, um, of the drainage. And I know that you asked for us to have uh, a drainage system as such as what's in over at the senior center, um, but that was not in our budget at this point. And I think you had concerns about who was going to actually take care of the uh, retention ponds and the drainage of that nature, not the DPW. Is that correct? Madam Chair, yes, my concern was uh, because it's exposed, DPW may not necessarily be able to maintain it properly. Mm -hmm. I also Another concern I, I also have because of that exposure, uh, for example, uh, mosquitoes and other rodents, or even sometimes uh, uh, because it's used, uh, where uh, neighbors may bring up their issues before the select board, and it becomes uh, an issue where we are not able to meet up the requirements. It becomes a concern. Mm -hmm. Also, I also felt that. Uh, we may not necessarily be able to capture most of the runoff water, mm -hmm. and so that's what that was. That was my concern. Yes. So according to our um, bylaw, and I think we had taken it off of there. It's uh, regarding the drainage bylaw, and it's ours. Um, storm water runoff, uh, and I think that we addressed it with what we had put in there. But I'm going to let um, Carlos and Chris, if you would like to explain it certainly can do a better sure. job than I can. Just uh, the background on the, the design that we have. Uh, so when we uh, design a site, particularly one that currently is vegetated across the area, and we put uh, impervious surfaces on their pavement and roofs that block the water from uh, soaking into the ground as it does in the field today, uh, that, in the absence of any stormwater control, then uh, causes uh, more water to leave the site and to leave at a faster rate, and this can cause downstream flooding and erosion and all kinds of different problems. So the uh, basic task of the stormwater management system is to take that runoff, which is now running off the site faster than it used to, 
and control it so that it leaves the site at a rate no faster than it does today. Um, and so if we have water coming in quickly and leaving slowly, the only way to do that is to create some volume of storage uh, to make up the difference until the, uh, the rain stops. Uh, and, and then we can uh, attempt to replicate the existing runoff characteristics of the site. Uh, so this is true of every project. Um, and in this project, uh, based on the fact that uh, we did soil evaluation, I personally did uh, soil evaluation in a couple of test pits across the site, found that it was relatively well drained, um, not perfect sand and gravel soils, um, but pretty good soils and relatively deep groundwater. Uh, that means that one strategy that we can use uh, is to infiltrate as much of that water as we can back into the ground. Uh, this is also a requirement of both the bylaw and the state stormwater standards whenever possible to uh, infiltrate that uh, surface water into the ground uh, as much as possible. And whenever we have a site that has ample land area, uh, the first place we look is to manage that on the surface. That's uh, both a preference expressed in the Hadley stormwater bylaw and also from a cost efficiency standpoint, um, a good place to go because the less that we have to bury in the ground, uh, the less expensive the system is. So what uh, the site relies on is uh, the majority of the impervious area, most of the roof of the building, as well as almost the entirety of the parking lot is directed to uh, a, an infiltration basin, uh, which is just really a depression in the field here uh, that is um, sized to allow about nine inches of water to pond uh, with then an overflow pipe for those very large storms uh, that we can't capture the entirety of. And uh, this is just grass. I, the planting plan has this as a, a no-mow uh, grass mixture, a meadow mixture, not truly never mow, uh, but mow once or twice a year as opposed to uh, a, a lawn that requires a little bit uh, more maintenance than that. And this just allows, uh, again, about that nine inches of water to uh, pond up in this area and then infiltrate into the ground. Um, you know, we've designed it to all of the design standards uh, in order to ensure that water will not sit here over the long term. Um, based on the infiltration rates that we measured, uh, we would expect that to empty about six hours uh, after the storm ends. Um, and then, uh, you know, one of the critical pieces when we're talking about infiltrating uh, that water is making sure that we're treating uh, the water to remove sediment before it gets into that basin because it can, over the long term, uh, if we allow sediment in there, can cause it to clog up and then prevent the water from getting into the ground. And uh, what we've done there is, uh, you know, when you look at it, uh, it will just be an, an area of relatively gently sloping grass, um, but it's actually designed to be what we call a vegetated filter strip a fancy word for a relatively flat area of grass. Um, but what we do is we allow the, the runoff from the parking lot to sheet over that grass and that traps the sediment in this area of the site before it gets into the basin. Uh, there is uh, maintenance that has to be done periodically to make sure everything is working. Uh, the most important of which is uh, an inspection twice a year. Uh, to go through and make sure there are no signs of erosion, to make sure that the uh, basin is behaving the way we would expect it to after a rainfall, and then to the extent that any sediment starts to build up from, say, sand uh, in the wintertime from uh, building up in this uh, filter strip, to then see that that gets removed so that it doesn't migrate into the basin and then potentially cause clogging. <coughs> uh, the alternative uh, is very much the same kind of creature uh, underground, which is again a large volume uh, that we use to capture that stormwater and allow it to soak into the ground. Uh, but if we were to go uh, the underground route, it would probably uh, require uh, catch basins as well as a stormwater treatment chamber uh, in order to do that treatment that we're relying on the grass on. Um, but uh, you know, physically that could be done. Um, but again, when we have the space and we have the soils to do this sort of surface management, uh, that's you know, uh, typically on, on any site, that's the first place that we turn um, for those reasons. Um, there is, uh, you know, 
I think Chris is also alluding to uh, some questions uh, about the stormwater runoff from the driveway of the fire station. Uh, this driveway here, because of the elevation that the building needs to be set at, the elevation of the road, is relatively steep at about 8%. Um, so it is difficult to capture the runoff from this driveway. When we submitted the project to the planning board, which is of course the stormwater authority, we acknowledged that, uh, that it was perhaps not impossible, but very challenging to capture this water, and we were allowing it to leave the site untreated, which is not in compliance with the bylaw, and we were requesting a waiver for that, which uh, the peer review engineer that reviewed the project agreed with our reasoning for. Uh, in discussing it with, with Chris, uh, you know, we did talk about the use of a trench drain at the bottom of this driveway. You know, looking at that, it is possible. We hate using trench drains because they don't work that well. Uh, even in ideal conditions, uh, water does tend to skip past them. They're kind of a pain to maintain, but they can be done and they do uh, provide some benefit for catching that water. Uh, in, on this site, because we're so distant to the nearest drain inlet to the storm sewer, uh, the nearest catch basin's here about 350 feet away from uh, the driveway. If we did a trench drain here, we'd have a pretty flat pipe um, so I'll say that we can incorporate that into the project. It will provide a benefit, um, but it's not the ideal situation um, uh, to try to do that. So that's the summary. I'll stop blabbing there and uh, that's okay. yeah, so what answer we're, any questions. What we're looking for then is a waiver to that one area there? There is, before the planning board, there is a request to uh, get, a waiver. get a waiver from the stormwater bylaw. That's their decision. Um, to allow this water to leave the site uh, without treatment. That's really what we're getting a waiver from. Um, the question now is uh, whether to you know, retain the, the design that we have for the surface. Uh, I, I say the, the question now, I, I believe the question now is mm -hmm. whether to retain this current design or look at the, the underground uh, system, which I think, you know, I won't speak for Chris's, uh, you know, thoughts on the maintenance of one versus the other, uh, but uh, that uh, would be the alternative. To Either this which way, there would still have to be maintenance to one or the other. Correct. Yes. So that you wouldn't have to, you know, I mean, somebody would have to do that, so it wouldn't make a difference. Now, I believe that the fire department said that they would uh, take care of the retention pond area. Um, and I do, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but a retention pond is actually a pond that is meant to hold water for a long period Correct. of time, which is the uh, different than Correct. what we have here, which is an infiltration. And the other thing that is important is that this was, we did not put in an underground system which would add the cost of eighty to $100,000 to the project. Um, and with the bylaw as it states, we are in compliance with the bylaw as this is. So I just wanted to, you know, bring that it, it forward. Just, so watching the, um, the previous planning board meeting, it seemed that the primary concern that night that they mm -hmm. had was the fact that we were intending to have water drain into the Right, into town. the storm drain system. Correct. So we're no longer... That would, that's what we're looking for, was that waiver on that one area right there of the yeah, so not, there, there not, was so not some, the whole property, not the it's whole property. The, the driveway area. Right. Driveway area. There's been some discussion about the overflow connection to the catch basin and potentially needing a waiver to that. We're not aware of anything in the bylaw that uh, prevents this. Obviously, it's the town system. The town has to consent to it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's there's nothing written that's, that creates a prohibition against that. Uh, what we do need to do, and what the system is designed to do, is to ensure that we're not increasing the runoff toward the street. Um, right now, because we're on the portion of the site closest to the street, uh, most almost this the entirety of the site currently ends up in the street and enters uh, that catch basin. So we're replicating the amount of water that's going there. We're just sort of changing the route at which it gets there. I thought last week the problem was the overflow yeah. pipe that goes from the drainage 
low point to the storm sewer. I thought that was the issue they were bringing up. Uh, Maybe I'm mistaken. I don't no, I, th I thought so too. I thought yeah. that they didn't yeah. want any new entrance, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, time they time. were yeah. saying that, the that we had as a select board years ago saying that water could not go into town system, but it did not address the issue of a town owned building. So it was at the purview of uh, the select board whether or not we were going to exempt this from allowing that to happen uh, since the building is not being used. Go ahead. And, and the overflow, and I think that overflow conversation I think went, went very different ways. Um, as far as I know, and Chris knows, there is no provision that doesn't allow us to have an overflow. There are provisions in town for illegal connections. And I think that was also thrown in in that same conversation. And I tried to make it clear that this in no way is an illegal connection to a stormwater system. Those are uh, sewer that goes into a stormwater, other, other types of connections. But what we're doing here <coughs> adheres to all the regulations. We're cleaning the water. We're holding the water for enough time within the site. And that overflow is only as a, as a fail safe at the end, which has been allowed. And as far as we know from the Bible, I can't see anywhere where there's no allowance to do that. So I think there was a little bit of com maybe confusion between an illegal discharge into the storm drainage system right. and an actual designed storm drainage system that has an overflow to a municipal structure. Um, is that so that fenced? The infiltration pond, is it fenced? No, not at all. It's a very shallow, as, right. as Chris yeah. described it. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the sides are five to one or, or six to one, so relatively uh, gentle and Again, the, the depth is only nine inches at the height of, of a very intense storm. And it is an infiltration uh, uh, <laughs> pond. So the idea is that you're infiltrating that water. We're not holding water for long periods of time here. As, as uh, Chris mentioned, I mean, the, the regulation, we want to be under 72 hours of holding that water. But from Chris's calculations, it seems like it will be six to eight hours or something to that effect. So my question would be if we're looking at using the rest of the piece of land for possibly recreation in other areas, do we want to have nine inches of open water sitting there in a field for six hours where the kids may be around? That, that doesn't really... That's but that that's design. What I was going to ask, just like what is the design condition when there would be that nine inches? Is this a hundred year storm? There'd be nine inches of water there or is it a normal... Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. rainfall, yeah. what's, what's the theory I, behind it? I think that it it overflows in perhaps the ten year design storm, so the, the storm that has a has a ten percent chance of happening at any point during a year. Um, and most of the fields are gonna be so wet at that time that you're not gonna be using it, so yeah, yeah. there's no issue. And, it, you know, we have, and, and I should say, uh, the 10-year storm is, I think, about four inches in 24 hours. Well, you don't want to use that theory in the past year. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's, there's a lot of, actually, there's a lot of serious discussion about our, uh, should we be revising yeah, those? I'm, I'm looking at further expansion of that property. I'm looking at the pond for safety and health reasons. You know, it, it's just, it, it's it's our board making rules and regulations that now we're trying not to abide by. It's MS4 the way it's written, which not is implemented yet, but will be soon. And these things you need to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. What What's, is this industry standard, the open uh, retention, or is, is the underground, uh, Chris, what, what's, which is preferable, or which works better? Why don't you the the discussion as it is right now? Uh, DPW has never complained that it didn't meet requirements. DPW com uh, complained is that best management practices, in my view, this would be a problem for us. For example, um, Chris talked about it. Once it's built, the aesthetics looks good. But that's for a year or two. The grass is going to grow. They're going to be sun. They're going to be uh, dunes. They're going to be mosquito. The issue of the water draining ever, uh, uh, within six hours, he's also right. But at the same time, we also have uh, 
sometimes sometimes when you will not be six hours. If this kind of weather we're in New England, he cannot guarantee that this weather is gonna be we won't have this weather for the next or oh, the area the whole field is wet for a long time. Mosquito is gonna grow. We have neighbors. The, the runoff water onto the street is going to be high. Uh, it is I who DPW have to manage the street. And because it's a public building, it creates a scenario where um, we cannot meet the requirement right away. Now, the town administrator said he was going to talk to the fire chief. Mm -hmm. If the fire department would take over the maintenance of that pond, I don't speak for the chief. But I don't know if he was able to talk to the chief. So it is, it is the maintenance that is the problem. The connecting to the town's um, storm drain, we don't have a problem with that. And it's not against the law. <coughs> it's, a town, it's a town building. Mm -hmm. So they don't need to ask us for permit. Or the, and I think uh, the select board will be able to waive that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that we, it doesn't eliminate our concerns. Also, we also think that the whole property is going to be affected with water. It's just a question of time. That, that's my concern. Yes. I mean, it, it's the, the, I go to what John said. So about if you go, I'm sorry, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. No, 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 I want to give <laughs> you a shot. That was why I, I, that's why we're saturated. Yeah. We're asking for the, uh, the same retention pond, but a buried, it's done all the time. It, it's a buried box so that nobody will see anything. It will be buried in the ground. The grass is covered. If DPW comes there once or twice a year to mow the grass, it's no problem. Plus, it will be able to, we can also, with the basin, we maintain the basins on the street. It's something. We come in once or twice a year, we clean the basin. Yeah. And it's done, uh, it's and done much, all the time. Much simpler maintenance. Yes. And that's what simple. we're doing at it's a the senior center and yes. library as yes. well. So, so this way, nobody knows what is there. Yeah. And it, it will yeah. also take care of... <laughs> The water. Well, then we just go back to town so, meeting, ask for another eighty so. to hundred thousand dollars. Now, over the last thirty-five years, we went from what we call deadhead catch basins, which was just a pipe or a concrete structure that just held five hundred gallons of water and it leached in the ground periodically yeah. over a period of time. But because of the storms we've been having over the past twenty years, we've been building leach and catch basins, which have worked out real well with a big stone bed and even going into the, the clay and the harder ground underneath. It's it's dissipated much much quicker and much better and it's it's been gone. You know? So it's eighty to hundred thousand dollar price tag on It hasn't it hasn't been I'm sorry, I shouldn't No no yeah. so, so I mean we I just so, wanna make sure so we're really talking if it would solve all the problems if you went underground. You could put a catch yes. basin at the end of the, the driveway for the uh, main right. station. You could put two or three catch basins down the side and run them all into the underground pit. But that, that's I the differential we're talking about in the cost of the project. <coughs> but we, we haven't estimate. We haven't had an estimator uh, give that. That's that's our ballpark, ballpark of what we think it would. Yeah. Okay. Cost. Uh, yeah. Why don't you, if you look also, the this the eight eight inch steep. That is too high for us to. That will that will make the water back on the street because of that pitch. That's so. We so that's our concern. In in the area your concern is correct. Just this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I talking with Chris. I told Chris that also mm -hmm. you know, because but with that eight inch pitch it's very high, but I, and so there's no way the water is, we won't have a lot of water on this on the street. Right now we still have water because of the farm area, mm -hmm. and so we are adding more to that. And again, uh, you know, our, our position on that area is that a mm -hmm. trench drain will uh, absolutely make things better. Um, yeah, it's not fair. It has its own limitations. No, that's true. Chris yeah. is right. A catch, yes. Basin, yes. Uh, cut, catch basin would cure it forever. Uh, well, a trench, a trench the drain is... The problem with the yeah. catch basin mm -hmm. is I can't physically connect a catch basin from this point on the road in this location and in this direction the next catch basin is about a thousand feet. Um, so the trench drain, I can start the pipe shallow enough that with a very flat run, I can get it in here. But if you're going underground, you don't need an overflow. No. Well, uh, you're talking, I think, two things. Well, that's two separate things. things. That's the thing you're talking about. The overflow yeah. is for this. Yes. Right. This is just yeah. what Chris is talking about. It's just that what I'm saying right. is if yeah. you wash that right now and just go with the other underground, you don't need to connect anything to the town 
Um, I disagree with that. No, it was that, connect that, that ultimately, whatever uh, underground basin I design will be overwhelmed by some storm, and then we, we still need the ability to discharge that water. But that would be underground. It would be. It, it would essentially be a replication of this volume of storage and uh, some smaller what? footprint. Mm -hmm. What's Which that? Is what? What's the volume? What's uh, the area? I believe the area is around 2,000 square feet. It's not totally comparable because underground will have pipe and stone, so the dimensions will, will shift it will around. Be smaller. Yeah, I'll say that either solution will work with proper maintenance for a long time, is, is my summary. Um, that I'm not opposed to underground, um, but we went this way um, for, for those cost reasons, and you know, this is designed to the, uh, to the Stormwater Handbook standards for <laughs> an above ground infiltration basin. It, and also I want to say to add just so, so that you know where the design process, the, the design standards for, for um, site plan review, which is what we are adhering to for this project, basically tell us you should put it in an above ground system. If possible. If, if, if every, it basically says if, if not feasible, if not possible, then you look into this underground. Um, which is the leaching basin. It, it basically, it says it straight out. So uh, just to start off the design, we went with this design standard, which was to let it be above ground and not have a leaching basin or have also the, the rest of the infrastructure that would require. Would so anyway, be required. You're, fl you're familiar with the area, right? Yes. So I've been on a board six years, and we've had US, U.S. Fish and Wildlife come in, which has an above ground one, which they didn't maintain properly, which has to be dug out. I can just imagine what that's going to cost. We've got another one on Venture Way, which is above ground, which is not maintained properly, which they're in the process of making plans of digging out. These are the kind of things that happen, mm -hmm. you know. And over the past probably three years, everybody's been designing them underground. Uh, Pride has had an old plan in place, that's why they're still above ground. But all the new places that they're putting in are all below ground right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, the only thing I'd add to that, though, is that uh, the underground system, if those uh, basins and treatment chambers upstream of it are not maintained, um, yeah. that will also fail. Yeah. It'll just fail invisibly. We know that quite well from our <laughs> sewers and uh, water and oil separators at our present fire station. <laughs> Uh, we do maintain it once a year now. They put it on their schedule, actually, and, and it's it's really takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. you know. So on one hand, you got the best management practice. On the other hand, you've got affordability. By installing the system underground, we're going to have to go back to the voters very likely for additional funding for the project. Well, can we can we talk about that a second? So the total project now is what? Two. Three point. Right, because we, we got another, and then we got another 800. 800. Or, so, so what about the? What's 20% on that? Yeah, what's the contingency within there? Is there? If if we were going to go back and do add all the nets or contingency, the contingency budget is is very tight right now, uh, because we've we've cut everything possible right now. We do have a contingency budget that it's going. It would take basically it would take off. The metal roof it may increase it might decrease the size of the station which we've already done once um, you might be looking at a different look of the building um, my, my biggest concern is that we spent a lot of time reviewing the soil and the layout of the site to maximize what it could be used for in the future um, and everything that i learned as part of this very long process was that this was the the best method of of eliminating the water issue, but also that it was the least impact of the site because you're basically it's such a minimal, it's not, it, it, you're not ponding it. It's not a pond, it's basically just containing water if you're getting a four inch rain event, it's holding that water in that space. So if you have a light rain, it's just, just as it would, you know, as, as a field. And pond's gonna be frozen in February and we're gonna get two inches of rain that's gonna be running right down the middle of the road. Just a question, um, how much, or just looking at other projects we're doing right now, is it possible to put together an underground design for a relatively nominal amount and include that in the bid spec as a, 
add alternate Alter. or something along those lines to get a price for that and see what the difference is. Maybe the bid will come in below budget and we could afford a system like that. I'd have to ask Phil Palumbo, yeah. the, the OPM yeah. and the, and uh, John. I think uh, that's it. Have you designed any underground yeah. ones or not? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you got to have some, you, you got the rough estimate yeah. oh, figure. Um, the, it would not be <laughs> difficult <laughs> to design a, a underground <laughs> system to manage the site. That's true. But this, this, I, I'm unclear if the underground system on the upper side, of, I guess that's uh, western side of the property, solves the problem of the driveway coming to the east out of the building. They, they are completely different. There's, there would be no way to get this water into an underground system uh, because of the relative so, element. I, I'm not going to say no way, but uh, I, I having not designed it yet, I don't anticipate that we can make that connection because of the elevations. I think this would end up much too deep um, if we wanted to try to get this water into it. So then 300 the feet at one tenth is how much? Um, one tenth of one percent? Well, pitch of the pipe? The pitch that I'd get to this catch basin is uh, about half a percent actually, not quite flat. Um, but the um, if I were doing an uh, underground system, I'm also balancing, again, keeping an overflow that's going to need sufficient cover. Um, I, the, uh, there's the surface elevation versus the seasonal high groundwater. I, I don't know. I, I remember looking at this and, and had trouble physically connecting any catchment of this driveway uh, into that basin certainly look at it and if it's possible we'd certainly tie it in so regardless of whether we go above ground or below ground we're still going to have the driveway issue of dealing with, with that water right which you don't know you said he's not sure right, right. The, the driveway issue could be I'm solved with sure the trench drain uh, which is a limited solution certainly if we had an underground uh, system and it is possible to collect the driveway and uh, send it in we would do that absolutely and I'm getting the sense that, I don't know, that mo most of us are feeling like we'd like to keep the water from the site on the site as much as possible yeah, absolutely. and eliminate I'm, it from I'm not, going to this. I'm not deliberating that. It's yeah. just yeah. underground compared to the above ground that, yeah. that I have a problem with. So if we can afford it and it comes under bid, I think it would be fantastic yeah. if we could get it underground and avoid the issue of... Under bid for what? Where where's the money coming from? That's my question to you. Well, the two, yeah. like Chris said, like we with the library, not library, which is the one center. the senior center, yeah. the other building, <laughs> yeah. one in the back. Um, we were actually pleasantly surprised with the outcome of the, of the bid. So, in this case, if we ask for the alternate, and I think what we're saying is we we'd rather kind of. I don't want to say do it once and do it right, because I understand where you're coming from. You're saying it's not really right or wrong. It's just a different methodology. But I think we are concerned because of the weather pattern changes that we've been seeing and the complaints we, we know that we get and the lack of maintenance in other areas of town that this could become a problem. So if we could kind of head that off by doing everything we can to keep the water on that site and not heading down, you know, River drive All right, there. So, then. so repeat that again. So you want to approve the project the way that it is. If it comes under bid, then you will go for the underground. No, it would be basically we'd have two designs. This would be our base design, and then we'd have a d design for an alternate. For, for an alternate, alternate that okay. would be a below grade system. Okay. That would address and then the concerns. They would they, the contractor. Yeah, the contractors would give All us right, a so price. Here, here's my dilemma right now that we have to go before the planning board on the 19th. Oh. So I want to have something concrete to give to them about how we're going to address this. Certainly we can say to them, this is what our plan is. If the project comes in under bid, then we would prefer to put the underground system in. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that that's, that would, I think would appease them, don't you? Carlos? I don't I don't know because really this subject has not come up in planning right. board. It came back 
later on between the discussions of Chris with uh, DPW. And I'll say we can provide documentation to them showing that either system meets the stormwater bylaws. Okay. So yeah. that I'm not concerned about. I think, I think that's important. Um, yeah. And it's going to have to be clearly laid out, the fact that it does meet the bylaw um, in either manner. But um, I certainly don't want to go back to the taxpayers and ask for another $100,000 no, just to put either. it on the ground, yeah. uh, especially if this is legal and effective. Yeah. Uh, but So would we do, oh, and I'm not sure why the planning board is even asking us to do this, but we, we would, as a select board, give a waiver if we went with the plan A? I don't think we need to give a waiver. No, they, they wanted to um, go the in. select board to, in writing, tell yeah. them that it was okay based on this long-standing policy or whatever we've had to have the overflow hook into the storm drainage system. They, they want us to take a vote oh, okay. and let them know that we're okay with For that. This project. Because their concern was that there are other residents, again, not municipal building projects, but there have been residents in town that have requested it and have been told no, and the planning board, I think, doesn't want to I mean, it's very different. It's a, it's a yeah. municipal yeah. project. Yeah, and, that's what, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it's not one that's going to be used 24-7. Right. The other, part, the other part is just what Carlos said, though, is you, you're not allowed to have illegal hookups to it. So right. that's the other part is they're asking you to sign off something that's really not part of that bylaw. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're waiving something that's really not part of that bylaw. I too. think, so. and, and, I, and I, I would, and of course, we'll ask David to draft it, um, but I don't think we would use the terminology of a waiver. We would just expressly indicate to the planning board right. that we have no objection to this. And there, there is a process for obtaining a permit for private uh, entity to connect. Mm -hmm. um, again, if, it, if it's simply uh, a resident sending it uncontrolled into the system, you know, that's different than, uh, than a system that's been designed to replicate what's heading to the street today. Um, and of course, the difference between the public and private um, property is important. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to add one thing because the term BMP has been best management practice has been thrown around as one or the other, and the reality is that both of these are BMPs. They're both best management practices. This can this system, um, the way that it's designed, is the best management practice. We've used the filter strip, which is a best management practice. We've used all this. The underground system is also a best management practice mm -hmm. in itself. Um, but I just want to make sure that people understand that it's not like one is a best management practice and the other one isn't. Both of them are adequate, they're designed to regulations, and they're BMPs. Yes. They're considered so to be BMP. Can I make a motion that we convey to the planning board that we as a board do not have any objection to tying into the storm, the town storm drains based on the fact that it's not illegal? According to the bylaw, and it's a municipal, and it's a municipal project. I would say for overflow purposes. For overflow yeah. purposes, yeah. right? Correct. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, we'll second that. And any further discussion? Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay. But are we still going to look for the two designs? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. How much is that alternate going to cost us? Well, they're going to look That's and see. Look they haven't done that yet. So we're, they're going to do a cost analysis. Right. We'll talk yeah. to Phil we'll and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Project manager. Yeah, we'll talk to yeah. project manager, let him know what's going on, and then we'll, we'll move forward with that. Mm -hmm. right. That's Phil, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about keeping everybody waiting. Public safety budget. Is there anything else, Chris, that you wanted to talk about tonight? Uh, street light request. Did we win on that one or not? The street light request, did you have to be in on that or not? He was yes. in on that. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was in. You were in on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, looking at Mitch and I, we, uh, I also went to, I also <laughs> went to look at the location. Mm -hmm. At DPW, we don't have a problem with street light. We understand what the, 
the lady, uh, her neighbor has a street light, that's why she's not working right now. And also, I'm investigating all the street lights in town to determine which are public, which are private, and also to see if there are ways we can get in touch with Eversource to see if it's feasible for the town to take over and uh, begin to see if we can get some grants to change some of the lights to LED. Uh, the long run that will reduce the cost. But at this location, I, I will, I will recommend. I, I'm not speaking about police, but I would recommend that if the board can approve, uh, give us authorization, we'll be able to put it right there. Yes. I think everybody received in their packet about yeah. the information um, in regards to that. Uh, we concur. We concur. What he said. Okay. Does anybody make a motion? Make a motion to approve that with the condition that we'd like for uh, Chris to have a little bit of time to investigate because this could be a spot for a uh, test case of an LED light that the town owns rather than Eversource. So uh, maybe not an immediate installation, but to start working down that path and approve that location. And if it doesn't turn out to be feasible for a town owned light, then we can go the, the Eversource route that we've been using. Right. David, how long ago do we? Look into the LED lights. A couple of years back, we uh, got two or three. We got a grant for it. Yeah. And it wasn't feasible at that time, was it? Well, you're you're spending twenty thousand dollars a year on your on your total lights. So when you think about it, twenty percent uh, savings versus the installation costs to do it wholesale didn't seem like it was going to work very well for us. And how, just keeping the discussion going, do we, who's putting in the light pole and providing the light and all that kind of thing, do we, as the town, install that pole or does Eversource install it? Is, is it pole there right now? There is a pole there is right a pole. Okay. It's Eversource's pole. It's Eversource's they pole. just charge Tom a set fee per light. Okay. They're not metered or monitored or anything like that. No. They're on, on we kept lights on at intersections and streets. Yeah. Yeah, you'll notice that Amherst and almost all of South Hadley has converted to LED yeah. and they're town slash city owned lights rather than Eversource owned because mm -hmm. there's some economies of scale in the town owning it themselves and maintaining it versus Eversource. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't know if it's feasible for us yet. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Vote or not a vote? Second. 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 All, Second. all those in favor? Aye. 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 And just quickly, so Chris can leave on cemetery fees. <gasps> Ooh, a lot to talk about. Maybe not, huh? Uh, we'll do that tonight. The next one. Well, Chris is coming back next time to talk about his budget. So. Um, so let's put that in that that night. Cemetery fees and reorganization. We can move that to your um, budget. Budget talks that night. Would that be okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I think Alan's in here with him as well. Yeah, right? that's, that's, what, right. that's what you're here for too. Yeah, but I'm okay. glad that we're going to move it to. I think that would be 20. better. For <laughs> yes, would that be okay? Yeah, that would be great. That would that be preferable. Okay. We we'll have a little more time to fine tune it. All right, that would be fine. All right, then we'll move that to there, and we will quickly before we get into the budget. I see Mr. Bukowski here for uh, speed limit request. And uh, it's a citizen's request. We, the undersigned of the petition of the Board of Selectmen challenge, change the speed limit at the corner of North Maple Street and Rocky Hill Road, uh, east to Plainville Road, from 40 miles per hour to 30. Yeah, so I, I don't have, I, I noticed just before I came over here today that it said refer to police chief. I don't have the authority. To change speed limits. Um, Chris, the DPW has a really specific set of criteria that has to be gone over in order to change speed limits. Okay. Um, you can probably go further into that. Um, yeah, Madam Chair, uh, the that would require the board, as the traffic commissioners, to authorize us to do it. Yeah, that's the way we used to do it. Yeah. Through so DPW, we would uh, through highway, yes. through the police chief. The, the police chief will sign off. They I, I mean, I, I us. certainly have no issue with that. Uh, that's have, how we set all the speed limits. Do like you have any issue with that, Chris, at all? No, I don't, I don't have an issue. No. No. 
certainly I think it's a well-traveled residential area. Yes, I, I, yeah, I don't have any issues with this change at all. It's just my understanding. I, I wasn't aware that the board had set those standards earlier. Okay. Um, the way I was aware that speed limits are altered is through a, a highway study and things like that. I thought it was much more complicated yes. than that, but I don't have an issue. With no. It. And, then, and then after we approve it, I guess it's going to go through the state. I think. So it, it's, it's quite a process. The, the, other, the other process would be for us to, as the chief said, we take, we take account that requires us to bring in a uh, traffic engineer. Um, I would take account for the board can give us a window of 30 days or 60 days. Okay. And w the count is done at uh, different times of the day mm -hmm. so that we can be able to maximize the average in terms of traffic. Mm -hmm. All right, this is Mr. Bukowski, yeah. and he's probably the one that has uh, spearheaded this. Uh, yeah. Uh, because we have had been in conversation over the last year or so uh, in regards to where you live on Rocky Hill Road and um, the traffic, how the speed limit changes from one to the other. Right, going 20 miles an hour direction. on either side. Yeah. 20 miles an hour going uh, west and 40 miles an hour going east. Mm -hmm. So there's a big difference between east and west there for some reason um, yeah. would certainly need to be I think looked at I'm all for doing I mean I've had people pass me on that section I mean it's ridiculous so yeah. whatever we need to do to work the process to if we have the ability to do it I'd like to make a motion to approve this and skip the traffic counts and save the money and the time as long as we have the authority to do so yeah so, can yeah. we yes sure so Okay. Well, oh, traffic well, that's easy. Yes, traffic oh, yeah. Second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Second. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Dropping it from yeah. 40 to 30. That was easy. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Good night. Thank get, work, get working on that rye bread now, okay? <laughs> Got it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> He's the Thank you. Great. 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 Lieutenant Cook, I got a question for you. On the uh, He's not going anywhere. speed limit on the guide, as far as uh, making it uniform, did we ever hear back from the state on that? I haven't heard anything from the state. No. They're busy with the bridge on the other side. <laughs> All right. Now I think we've covered everything, and God bless us. We're now going to hit the public safety budget. Thank you. I'll be patient. Who would like to go first? Um, yeah, I can go. Uh, I have two budgets, uh, probably the most line items out of, out of all three of us. I want to try something a little different this year. I put a little bit, what's that? Page 60 in your book. Page 60 in your book. Um, I try to put a little bit of uh, extra effort into building these, uh, not only for the board, but also for folks at home. And I'm pretty sure that David and Jennifer put them uh, online. So if you see this um, online in the board docs, that gives you a description. I go line by line with every item in both budgets and try to describe them as best I can uh, so that folks understand what we're asking for for the money, uh, if there's a reduction and why, um, if there's an increase, why. Um, but I'm also open to obviously questions from obviously you and the finance committee, but also the public. So please shoot me an email and uh, I'll try to answer you. Uh, I'm going to, because of the fact there's about 40 line items here, I have selected like six or seven that have any significant change to that. Um, most of the both. Um, most of them are are fairly close to what they were last year, or they're very general standard increases like electricity and things like that. So if you have any other questions outside of what I go over, fire away. Um, police, the three wage increases that uh, are of any question possibly or any significance would be the full-time uh, part-time and uh, overtime lines. Those increases are based on two things. Um, they're based on the uh, collective bargaining agreement increases that the officers were given um, this past time around, as well as um, I'm requesting a full-time um, school resource officer. This is something that 
came up in discussions with the school committee as well as I believe finance a couple of years ago. Uh, it's something that we've been kind of aiming for for a while now. Right now we have uh, a school resource officer who essentially splits duties between four different schools as well as his actual job of being a patrol officer. Um, my goal with this is to essentially give us a person who can spend almost all of their week, unless something insane happens, um, within the school system. And Grant, like I said, there are, there are four schools, so it's still not going to be what you would envision as a full-time school resource officer sitting in the school, every school, 40 hours a week. It just can't happen. But it will get us closer to that goal. So that's where those increases come from. Um, you'll notice a decrease in our tech support service line. Uh, we find more and more creative ways of getting free money from the state uh, as we move on. That's what that decrease is from. We've, we found a, a way to get some more money from state 911 so we can decrease that line uh, and use some grant money for that. And the other significant increase you will see on the police budget is the fuel line. I can speak for both Mike and I on this one, so you won't have to hear the same speech twice. Um, the reason for that significant increase is twofold. The first is that um, we were asked uh, last year, was it last year, a year and a half ago, uh, to go back into our budgets to find uh, any, any uh, excess money we had so that we could fund the firefighter positions. I believe it was to the tune of 60 something thousand dollars from all of public safety. Uh, both Mike and I, Mike, Mike hit a couple of other line items, but my, my line item that I hit was a uh, fuel line. So I reduced, I believe, six or seven thousand dollars from that line so that we can move it over into the other side of public safety to fund that aspect of things. That coupled with a uh, increase in fuel costs, which we were not prepared for and hit us uh, well after the ability to put it into a budget um, that caused me to have to request a significant increase so that we can cover what our standard fuel costs are each year. Basically, fuel prices doubled um, through uh, Fur Furcock, is that what it was? When we, when we had that meeting? Close enough. Be cheaper to go to Cumberland Farms um, at that point. But that's what that increase is for. Uh, Mike is having the same issue uh, with his fuel line. So those are the significant alterations or changes to the police budget. Any Let me just move right over to communications. Well, does anybody involved. have any questions on the police budget? Yeah, if we pull out, um, I'm assuming that the full-time school resource officers in the full-time wages line item, yes. that 11% increase? Correct. Just, um, just wondering if you did the math, if you pull that, that salary out, mm -hmm. like what is the increase? If you rate? look at page uh, two of this document here, yep. um, I break it down separately again. So you'll see the very top line that says wages full-time officers. You'll see one item with school resource and one without. Oh, got it. Okay. All right. So it you. drops it uh, 40 some odd thousand dollars. Yep. So that would reduce, obviously, that would reduce that um, that increase fairly significantly. I just have a question. No, no grant money out there for because of schools for something um, like this. Well, there are there. Yeah, I mean, Annie and I have actually been we've been working a lot keeping our eyes open for grants. She's found a couple that just weren't, they weren't gonna work for us or they were so competitive we weren't gonna get them. There, there's nothing that you know of currently that is uh, for personnel specific. Okay. But um, this was searched, you searched it. Yes. Okay. Communications? Are you, gonna, are you gonna do anything with the overtime wages with this new officer? Overtime wages continue to go down, John. 
I, well, I know I'm watching. I just, we are, we are at. touch on that. I wanted to make sure. If, yeah, heard. well, the overtime wages, the increase there is just out of precaution, essentially, because the officers were getting this, the increase in their wages. I wanted to make sure that we could cover it. Yeah, the, it. the increase because yep. of the contract, yeah. Yeah, um, so everybody's aware. I just got, I mean, this is the most recent numbers that I have for February, and our, uh, our variance currently, the percentage spent of our overtime line is uh, only up 40 percent so we are below half of the money that we were given uh, in this in FY 19 to spend so we are going to have a surplus it continues to go down and that's considering the fact that we haven't had full staff because of people coming in and going out um, this previous to the previous to all the changes that we made in our structure this would have broken the budget so um, it continues to drop. We continue to collect data on it. Um, everything is exactly where we hope. Um, I would go so far as to say that it is under control. And what are we doing with that rotating account for construction? So you have an article on the annual town meeting warrant to add nineteen thousand dollars to that uh, that okay. seed money there. That's a that's a fair number. You feel that's well, the number that you and I talked about. Oh, oh, the police details. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm actually, Mitch and I are preparing something that, that uh, if there's questions at town meeting, we can speak okay. uh, better to it. We're trying, to, we're trying to collect a little bit of data from Joan just to show how much, just to show essentially the fact that the, it's a rotating account, but essentially it's a loan yeah. um, with the, with the uh, administrative fees that we collect from these private duty details. We have paid this back 10 times over. Mm -hmm. um, but we just need to collect some of those numbers so that we can explain yeah. that better to folks at yeah. town meeting. Well, and, uh, and the reason why we're doing it is because of the situation we were in with the second stage of the Route, ten, route 9 project, mm -hmm. um, and nobody was getting paid. So, so yeah. just to be clear for people that are watching, that's just to advance basically the officers their pay until the contractors pay the town. That's correct. The way that we did it previously, um, the officers could wait months and months for their for their payments, and technically, uh, Mass General Law doesn't even allow that. Mass General Law actually requires payment for those details within, I think, 13 days, I believe it is. Something short period like that. Short period like that. So essentially, that's why rotating accounts were created. Um, unfortunately, with the amount of details that we have here in town, we are always behind the officers, and everyone is very good about cooperating and just saying, all right, well, we know it's money in the bank, but this is a way of kind of speeding that process up. Then they don't have to wait. Correct. Well, no, and we got a couple of big projects coming down the line. We do. Uh, we do. The, the last Route 9 project that went on for a year and a few months really kind of broke our backs, yeah. and uh, we're trying to get back on track now. Mm -hmm. So before you move on to communications, mm -hmm. um, just the other police expenses? Yep. I just read the explanation. It's a pretty... It's like a 25 percent increase in that line item, and the other police supplies. 210 dash 50 by 80. It says K9 slash K9. Yeah. Yeah, I, but the explanation doesn't talk about the dog at all. It talks about that's miscellaneous. Stuff. That's not my notation. Yeah. That's from the accounting office. I don't know why that has. Oh, okay. So, there. so what's the? Um, that's not reason that's going up that much? The, the increase in that line, um, I actually have, have to look specifically on what the the notes that I made were, just because if there's so many of them. Alright, so um, I based this not only on um, projected FY19 spending, but also um, because we have some office equipment, furniture that is literally falling apart at this point in the squad room that have very expensive computers and everything on them and we're looking to try to change some of those things out. Also the cost for tasers uh, for our next installment is, is within that uh, projection. So essentially it's just things that I'm kind of assuming we're going to get that are going to be fairly expensive and they like I said basing that on FY19 numbers. 
I thought the furniture and stuff like that we were trying to. The furniture was bought an initially on, I believe, a capital line item that covered yeah. the entire department. Fire, Probably police, whole, flooring, yeah, and, the whole, and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. um, that was five years ago, I believe six years ago, something like that. That and was there for was the some, conference room. Yeah. Basically, it was for the, to replace the conference room and training. So. But some of that equipment is in need of replacement. We, we can replace a lot of the things within the dispatch room on the 911 grant, but once you step across the threshold, they won't pay for it anymore. So it's just things that we have to do ourselves. We have our civilian advocates that have to have their own space with their own office uh, furniture. We have uh, supervisory offices upstairs that need things replaced, mm -hmm. as well as the squad room with four uh, computer terminals uh, that we need to make sure are in good condition. Had a couple of keyboards take rides to the floor because the entire rollout drawer comes out and goes onto the floor. So, rather than replace more expensive items, <laughs> replace some simple furniture. <laughs> so I'm just like you've got your your lieutenant behind you, just nodding at it. Well, you have his full support. I see. Well, he's the <laughs> he's the one that has to deal with the problem. When it happens, so. <laughs> But that's, you know, like I said, it's it, it, because it's a supply line, it covers so many different items. I, I could probably uh, break it down for you better uh, if you wanted me to, but I, I can take a walk around the station and, put, and, and list things out for you if you'd like. Just but, ask. No, I just. Next. Next. Communications. Um, all of the building. Parts of the communications line were things that I discussed with David, uh, as well as some of the folks uh, over in town hall, because they have to do with heat, gas, sewer, uh, things like that. So those were those are all standard increases. Uh, what you will see on the top three line items are the things that I think folks would uh, want to pay more, or what you would want to pay more close attention to. Um, what we are trying to do is. Um, we spent a lot of time on the police department and we spent a lot of time on the fire department uh, really trying to build up that staffing and get it to the level that is uh, more efficient to do the jobs that we need to do. It is now time, I believe, to, uh, Mike and I both believe, to do the same with our communications department. Um, so what those three items that you will see, the significant, two significant increases and one significant decrease, is what we are trying to do is um, we currently have money in the budget to for uh, four full-time positions. We have one person who is out on medical leave right now, so we are funding four full-time slots. So we do not need to uh, add that extra position. What we're looking to add is one position uh, at a supervisory level. With appropriate um, scheduling and um, staffing plan we intend to make our dispatch center uh, full-time folks 24 hours a day seven days a week the way that it currently runs is the way that you've heard us describe um, the way the police department ran for some time which is uh, a lot of money in a part-time line uh, for part-time folks to do the job of a full-time person and unfortunately it was never the same part-time person doing the job so you end up with more mistakes and it is much less efficient to run the department that way. What we are going to try to do is uh, bring in one more, one more person to, to create that supervisory position just like similar to the, uh, the lieutenant and the deputy chief in the fire department are right now. It will be in the union, but it will give us um, someone who is an actual dispatcher to be a dispatch supervisor, which we are desperately in need of. You'll see the significant decrease in the part-time line because we intend on doing the same thing with this budget that we did with the police budget, which is use money from within our budget to cover as much of these costs as we possibly can. So um, you'll, you'll notice that you know, hiring extra people should cost a lot more than that. And with, those, with, with the fact that we're using money from the part-time line, moving it over there, hopefully will decrease those costs for us. Have the reason I, sorry. I'm sorry, have these been factored into the employee benefits line then? <coughs> no? No. 
Is uh, that supervisor required to be a union member? Not required, no. Something that it's actually, if all of this, if it makes, if this makes it through every budget section and is approved, we will then be looking for permission to impact bargain with the union to deal with that situation. So we'll be looking for input from the board, obviously. You wouldn't have to if you made it a supervisory position. If it was outside of the union, correct. if it had some effect on collective bargaining, we would still have to impact bargain it. Um, we're not, we're not really, we haven't have gotten that far yet, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, but why would it have an impact? Similar to the lieutenant. The, the, this person is going to be it's able management. to discipline. It's management. I, under right, I so understand why would they, that. I mean, why, why would you... You wouldn't have start to start <coughs> being in the union and go the other way. Yeah. I'm not saying that we would. Oh, I'm not saying that at all. You just said it would be a union. That's, that was my initial thought, yes. But until David suggested it, we, you know, pulling it outside. But with the management position, you know, if you're pulling somebody out with outside of the union in a management position, you're talking about probably a higher salary and, and you know, things along that lines. This is, this is kind of a base level starting point. Um, yeah. that we had discussed. And I know this is down the line, but I would just say it gives us more flexibility as a board and as a town to have them outside the union, especially as a management individual. Well, we can't, imp we wouldn't, be, you know, we wouldn't be able to do some of these things without the board's consent anyways, so yeah. that's... No, just something to think about. Though. Yep. We're trying to get away from keeping it within the union if they're okay. management. Supervisory position. But I'm also hearing that we haven't factored in the employee benefits, so we need to add 35 What's that factor now? 35%? Mm -hmm. 40%? 40, with 34. 34. 34. 34. 44. 44. 44. 44. 44. I was afraid that's what you said. She's the one here. Okay. David and I have, I mean, obviously, in submitting this budget to him, um, he's, you know, was aware of that, that we, we are going to be needing one more body. Right. So. It's just that, that that didn't make its way over to. Um, the employee benefits okay. budget. So, so that would be for that school resource officer too, exactly. correct? Yeah, so currently, currently this, the, we receive funding from the school systems which pay for the benefits package of the school resource officer. How do you do that? I don't know. You have to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how does that happen? The, uh, the school budget covers. Is that what we're talking about? I'm sorry, I had yeah. a senior moment. Resource. But the employee benefits is on the town books. So yeah. how could anything from the school yeah. cover that for all the school it, employees? It wouldn't. It's all the school employees. All the school employees. Well, Around the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Right. So how could money from the schools be covering anything? It's, unless it's a contribution above and beyond the salary. Okay, let's, so let's to be determined. Let's, we're on communications, so go ahead. Those are the three. Those are the three major okay. uh, issues with communications budget that we'd be looking to uh, to make changes to. So, has anybody looked into in a long time county dispatch? Oh, I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> John, it's one of my goals and objectives. I have been working on that been for a couple of years now. Quite a while. Um, we've started and stopped several times. Um, I, if we started driving at regional dispatch at 100 miles an hour right now, we still wouldn't be there anytime soon. So I, I think can't, it's a number to I look can't at. sit on. It, it, well, it absolutely is, and I am. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is that. Um, until we get anywhere closer to a decision on that, I don't want to sit on this and allow it to continue to be run inefficiently um, until we get to that point. Plus, there's other towns that haven't jumped on board with the regional either. That's all. So, well, that's all I mean, part of. We're my, not going to be regional with my, ourselves. So. Well, that's yeah, all. That's, that's kind of all part of some of the stuff that I've been researching. And like I said, it is, it is one of my goals and objectives. And I have, like I said, I've been working on it for yeah. a couple of years now. I've started and stopped just because of a lot of other things that have gotten in the way. Um, I, I like the idea in a, in a nice clean nutshell. Um, but there, there are some factors that are kind of realistic for us that. Um, 
turn it off by number one, what Joyce just said. I don't even know who else is interested at this point. You know, like Franklin County's well established and they've been for a long time, you know. I, Hampshire County is just a mess. It still is. You know, I don't care what anybody says about it. I know they're trying their best, but they got a long way to go, you know. But it's just something to keep in the back of our minds here. We can save quite a bit of money down the road. Absolutely. It's in the back, it's in the years. front, we talk about it all the time. I know. I mean, you know. And yeah. they're not making any progress. But again, you can't all. you can't get a regional if nobody else is interested in it, John. My only you know, that's the bottom with, line. My only concern with that, and I'm sure it's uh, one of your considerations, is at least when it's in-house, that quality control is in-house as well. And uh, you know, if, if, you, if you want to make a, if you, if you want to make a, uh, give us some time at a meeting, at an upcoming meeting, um, whether it be before you approve the budgets, uh, I can I can certainly present to you what I have so far. Um, that is absolutely one of the issues. Governance is a huge issue. Um, Mike is, I know what he's going to say. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I was part of the original uh, regional plan with Amherst and numerous other communities, including UMass, all of which kind of fell apart. So it was brought up again with new partners that then fell apart. So additional money coming in. We should already have been at the part where it was the regional dispatch was being built out. Yeah. So the unknown numbers in there was, like you said, governance, but also um, what happens to our 24-hour facility that's now doesn't have a dispatcher sitting in it to handle burn permits and take phone calls and everything else? Um, so there was a lot. There was a lot more to it than just um, making this regional dispatch. And there's also a lot of requirements on where you can have it. Um, it's considered, you know, a pretty important facility, so it has to. There's specific guidelines on where it can be, uh, and then just. Um, looking at the numbers, it was at that time it wasn't feasible, but we continue to look at it. Uh, Evan was just talking, you know, uh, South Hadley, Grandview are, are looking into it. So, um, so you know, this potential out there. I'm, I'm, we're part of a regional emergency planning committee right now, and I, I know very well how the funding is normally much more substantial when you go regional. However, there's just there's a lot of costs you have to take a look at uh, to take into account everything, the big picture. Not to mention the fact the amount of money that we've spent revamping our entire communication center certainly wouldn't preclude us from being the hub itself. Correct. Mm -hmm. Where we that was, the other, the money that was my next question, to, you know. Yeah. If we initiated it, maybe <coughs> we could get other people involved. Other towns involved. If we initiated it, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how that works? I know, but ain't like. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to nominate somebody who's not at the meeting. <laughs> Nobody's got any other time for anything else. Well, you've got okay. two new assistants to both of you. Yeah. I yeah. think that's a perfect job for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, John, it is. I know, you got something to say to me later. <laughs> if you want to hear, if you want to hear more over. about it, <laughs> let me know. I just have a question too on the wages and training uh, for re for uh, dispatch or communications. Yep. yep. Uh, I think it was a while back you guys talked about revamping your procedures for when you receive calls and mm -hmm. like a flip book or a computer program or something along those lines mm -hmm. to update that. Is that in there at all or is that still in the plan? That's that's not in there. That actually was in, um, I actually put that in a capital item. Yeah, okay. Um, and Mike and I are, were kind of in the process as well as with the lieutenant and the deputy chief discussing how that was going to actually work. There are computer systems out there that do it, but we okay. thought we could save money by doing it ourselves. That's something that we are certainly working towards, but that's not in the operational budget. Okay, I didn't know if that was something to kind of look at putting in there, yeah. so just wanted to ask. Okay. Good, any other questions? Moving on, fire? Fire. Oh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just hanging around. Not much you want to listen to his budget. I know what's in it. Yeah, he listened to his. Only because I went first. This is what I said.
Yep. Mind sharing? Share. <laughs> so uh, I did pretty much the same thing um, as, as Mike did, so I won't bore you on the gasoline line. Uh, my budget was actually pretty much right on the money um, before I, I cut it, um, based upon try the need to supplement the budget last year. Um, Anyway, so the biggest ones for me, uh, just to note, you know, I, I'm going into a new contract this year, so that's that's not included in this. Mm -hmm. uh, that's level serviced at this point. Uh, the other the other big one for us is our fire administration so administrator. So uh, Terrence's position that was taken out. Um, I had to find some substantial money, <coughs> and uh, that was one of the positions we looked at to. Uh, we were hoping not to do it, but uh, in an effort to try and get the fire department going with uh, the full-time day staffing, um, we were we were under the understanding that hopefully at fall town meeting <coughs> that, that funding would be put in back into place, but it just didn't come to fruition. Uh, so what I did was in, in evaluating. So our our new full-time day staffing uh, going out the door every day very quickly with an ambulance has decreased the number of call force firefighters showing up for you know some of the the easier daytime calls so you have the fire chief the deputy and two firefighters that can go out uh, for the more serious calls complying with you know with NFPA for the two in and two out rule but obviously if it's something bigger we would hope that some of the call force members would be able to come back during the day um, however we are now, all of us are now entering our own reports and inspection reports and invoicing and everything else because we no longer have that office person in place. So what I did is I did an evaluation of our part-time, fire part-time wages and our training and station duty wages and took that, took $10,000 out of the part-time wages, which is the call force uh, pay. And again, I can't tell you if we're gonna have a forest fire this year or 20 building fires or whatever it's you know I, I don't have that crystal ball so um, looking at historical data and evaluating the budget at this point I felt confident in taking ten thousand dollars out of that line and five thousand out of the training line to re-implement the office person um, back at a grade five step one uh, so uh, again this would be 18 hours a week, it would not be a salary or, or a benefited uh, position uh, to get a person in there to assist with all that that stuff in the office. Um, so that that's one of the biggest things that we're hoping to be able to accomplish this year. Um, again, new positions, whole new management, uh, whole new management um, we have in place right now as far you know I have a deputy we have two we have four full-time firefighters now it's working out great um, right now we're tracking on not exceeding what we have for the full-time wages uh, but we I did put in it's been quite a while since a number of these folks have gotten a step and um, I feel that especially Nick and Evan they're they're all at very you know they're very base pays so I, I've that's part of that um, that increase in the levels uh, in the uh, in that line item for full time salaries. Um, we also, I, I hate to say it, but Evan and I have been coming in. So basically, if there's somebody who calls in sick or somebody needs to take a day off, that drops us down to one firefighter, but potentially two taking the day off. Evan and I have, as salaried employees, have been coming in to cover a lot of those shifts so that we're not going into overtime. But there's some times where it's not physically possible with the schedule that we have. And I don't think it's appropriate for us to be going down to one firefighter back in the station again. And just looking at the numbers right now, we're not, we're not looking at tens of thousands of dollars in overtime here, but I, I feel that I've, I've requested to increase uh, up to 30 hours of overtime per firefighter. So that's the, the overage you'll see. Um, on the on the overtime portion. Uh, the next one is uh, building maintenance center and north, and there that um, I I think it it's David maybe just didn't realize what that what that funding was that was pulled out to six thousand dollars. 
Uh, we had met with um, Chris Okafor, and we have new building fire alarms in this building, uh, the DPW, the wastewater plant, um, and we had a discussion about moving all of those, the maintenance and the monitoring of that, into the fire department budget because we're the ones that do the inspections on it, we're the ones who receive the call if something goes wrong with them. So that's a combined $6,000 to cover the monitoring and maintenance of all the building's fire alarms at this point. So it also includes the library, uh, the Callahan water plant, and also we're still currently being monitored up at the North Hadley station. That also, and we also moved over the maintenance portion of the generator, the public safety generator. So that is in capital for, for replacement because it is now, you know, 1996 it was put in there. They are no longer making parts for it. Um, we have had some failures on it. We are in the process. We just got the price in to replace the exhaust pipe. The exhaust pipe is one section has fallen off of it. Um, so it's it's time for, and you know, we put it in as a priority through capital uh, to really get that that going because that's the lifeline of our of, of our station. And you know, by the time it goes out for bid and everything else, we're looking, you know, it's potentially another year. So um, so that increase in the alarm and building maintenance uh, would actually be, other than the generator maintenance, is there really any increase or is it just being transferred from other departments budgets into your budget? Correct, yes. So, so the we're, right now the maintenance budget for the generator is through the DPW. Okay. That's coming over to my budget, as well as the, um, some, of the some of the buildings weren't monitored, but they're all now monitored with new. Okay. Uh, we, we, we had a uh, capital request that we did you know, we did a in-kind, basically, replacement. Okay. Uh, this does not include what will be coming up with the new building, so it does not include the uh, senior center uh, and the new library. Right now, we just, I just submitted a letter to Simplex Grinnell to authorize them not to do the annual inspection and testing at the senior center because it was a substantial price and the building's closing. So we told them that we would handle that inspection. So hopefully there'll be a reimbursement coming for that portion. Uh, so that's that was the purpose of that increase on that line. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> fire extinguishers, again, this is another town-wide uh, that was all brought in under the fire department, and unfortunately, this coming year is a six-year maintenance of over 150 of our extinguishers. So uh, again, that's that reflects an estimate from our contracted uh, extinguisher maintenance company. and. Um, Again, so that 3,000 has to remain in there because that's to inspect all of them. And then there's also an additional six-year maintenance and hydro testing that needs to be done on a number of the extinguishers. Uh, so that's that increase. Um, our, our engines, ladder testing and maintenance, uh, I, again, don't have a crystal ball, but we've I've really been tracking the cost per truck. Uh, this year was a pretty hefty price tag on our engine two, which is hopefully going to be going down the road after next year when the new station is built. Um, but we're looking at right now. I have zero dollars in our. Actually, I've expended exceeded the uh, budget, and I have not inspected our ladder truck or our new engine four. Um, I'm hoping to have some money coming back for uh, part of their. They were supposed to have one part for us that they didn't, so there's a credit that we'll be able to use. Um, to do the inspection on engine four, but engine one, our ladder truck really needs an inspection this year, but it averages $14,000, and I have no money left in that line. So we're, we're trying to figure out if we can just do it in-house, but again, we don't like, we can't certify a ladder, basically. So uh, it's something that we'll be in discussion with, with David about of how we're gonna handle it. All right. Uh, yes. Is the fire uh, company that built the truck inspecting it, or Correct. third party? Uh, for the new truck, it's Pierce. Pierce is the one oh, who handles it. still warranty, so the new truck's probably... Correct, the new truck. The other one is third party through the same company, okay. Fleetmaster. Yeah. They are still very much, um, they actually less than yeah, most places. Yeah, we always did third party. Yes, we, ha we have to. Yeah. We don't have the ability, we don't have anybody certified to do a fire yeah. truck inspection. Uh, so the increase in the phone is, that's the actual phone bills. That's what we paid. Uh, so hopefully it won't go up. Actually, they did do an increase. I don't know if you noticed that, but I, Tim, I notified Tim as well, but the, the, the 911 amount that you put into that 911 actually increased 
uh, from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five or something like that. So that's reflected uh, reflected in this as well. Um, don't need to talk about gasoline and diesel. Uh, the fire PPE and bunker coats. We get five sets a year to keep on track with uh, the OSHA standard, which you're not you're not allowed to use turnout gear for interior attack fighting if it's over ten years of age. So you guys, you know, we went for the AFG grant. We got a certain number of, of gear back in 2004 or six, I believe. And then we put into the budget every year five sets to keep that. So we're, you know, staggering it. Um, and we're looking at five sets that are going to have to come out this coming year. So that's uh, the, the increase is based upon the contractor telling us what globe turnout gear is going up in their, in their cost. <coughs> and those are the those are the big ones. Um, we have two computers uh, that are we have these little small computers that need to be replaced. They've exceeded their life expectancy. They're running extremely slow. They were I think we received them five or six years ago. Um, so we're looking at two additional desktop computers. And you know our new firefighters are sharing computers with you know sort you know the shifts change and they share the computer. So we're uh, just looking at that. Are they just desktop workstations or are they some kind of specialized servers? Or uh, we actually uh, are working on our server. So the server that we received, um, we have a gentleman who actually works for the Lever Fire Department who's actually cleaning it up for us right now and we'll be able to put all of our shared documents on it. That's not a big expense. It's just he's managing and ma maintaining it for us. Um, so he's going to establish it so we can put all of our files on that and share that, but the computer itself is right now um, the way it was originally set up was these little slave computers would run to that, but it's just documents were getting lost um, and they can't handle any storage on them. Uh, we did put some minimal storage, but it really slowed down how you could operate on it. So some of the guys are sitting there five minutes just trying to start the computer up. And so I, I just know I know it's a very tiny portion of the budget, but it, maybe if we can talk to the IT people because it's it's a it's just a huge amount for two computers it, with the way technology has changed. So that's that's the only thing for 9,800 bucks for uh, you know two desktops. You could well, actually, that's it's only um, the increase is only so it was 70. We had 7,800 in there, and that's for software, so NFPA standard yeah, everything. Yeah, so yeah, the software, software as well, not just the computers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Those fancy computers for 9800 Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Okay. We actually have been uh, using <laughs> our, our, every year we get, uh, <coughs> MEMA puts out our EMPG, emergency planning grant. So this year we actually received uh, a laptop computer that's been assigned to the uh, uh, animal control officer. So he's putting all the regional plans on there for if there's an event with needing to spin up a, you know, a regional shelter for animals. And then also it has IMC connected to it, so uh, that's been taken care of, so he'll be part of the planning crew if, if we have an event, which we've had in the past with the river, having to manage, you know, animals and everything. And every year we try to bring a new laptop in if we get the funding for it to, you know, we're trying to keep up, obviously, with, uh, with laptops that are getting older. So that's, that's been helpful. That's kept, kept the price down. Any questions? Okay. Um, that emergency broadcast is staying the same. Roughly. That's correct. That's actually something uh, the Nixel, the Nixel thing. Um, hopefully, it'll be helpful. But uh, David and I have spoken, and it's the system that he's proposing is um, actually, I'd say, very consistent with Code Red with what what we have right now. And I actually like some of the features even better than Code Red. So that budget would be able to cover cover the Nixel cost for you for all of it mm -hmm. for next year. So that would also, you know, manage that, that system for you. And it would include the emergency portion. So the, there's the public portion and then the emergency portion is, adi is additional, but that, that would cover both. Yeah. Right now we're using the um, informational notification aspect of it only. And then uh, when we transition here in a few months, then we'll start paying for the emergency portion of it. Mm -hmm. Good. How about finance? Have any questions? No. Valerie? Good. My only question is, you know, we have two things in here that were cut that 
chief's requesting? What do we want to recommend or what do we want to do regarding those we don't the admin make salaries? We don't want to have to make tonight. any decisions? Okay, good. Tonight. Just hearing budgets right now. Just hearing, okay. So can I just ask a question? Um, Watch him for a minute for me, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about revenue for a second. What's that? Revenue. So on the, the fire inspection side, um, I heard that it sounded like the inspection revenues really picked up in at least in January. Um, we had had a conversation about that, and when we were when the financial management team got together and we were looking at overall revenue for the town and what we should um, assume for purposes of the budget. One of the things that um, I was pondering was just trying to figure out when we look at the inspections revenue that you guys are generating now, um, as you're able to get start getting caught up on some of the inspections with staffing, I have no sense like, if, what, what is the magnitude of like the total revenue available? So in like Nirvana, you may, waved a magic wand and all you had to do was go out and just do every inspection in town that we have the opportunity to generate <laughs> revenue from, what does that look like? I mean, is it $40,000? Is it fifty? Well, I mean, we're doing an annual inspection for $50. So mm -hmm. unless it's a larger site that takes over an hour, then I believe it's, it's $60 an hour. Okay. Um, and so how many... I mean, we were just had no idea. I mean, if you wanted to guess, I, I don't know how many businesses are, but if you put an estimate of 400 businesses uh, times the $50, mm -hmm. that would be for that portion. But we're also doing underground storage tanks, propane tanks, mm -hmm. transfer tanks for vehicles, you don't home sales. Record. What's that? You don't have a fee record in any of this? A fee record? Yeah. As far as? You can't calculate your Yes, I calculate our, the number of inspections yeah. it's in the annual report oh, yes sir. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I think we she's looking for you're looking for the, the number the, the revenue what's number. the opportunity what's right. the revenue opportunity is there and a then, backlog that we're yeah. not capturing that possible inspection revenue is that is that what you're yeah. yeah and that's we know that that's the position that we've been in right. you know because mike didn't have you know it was you and and uh, nick for a while just running mm -hmm. around trying to do everything you could between calls. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, again, so it's the call call situation, so we're going out the door consistently, you know, over 1,300 calls this year. Um, and we have two people on duty during the day, plus myself and the deputy. Um, again, we're only seven months, eight months into our full-time staffing, so we're still training folks on how to do these pretty right. extensive inspections. Evan is definitely prepared for this. Um, Nick is still doing, uh, we're trying to assign different ones so it's not so, we're trying not to make it so that we're losing so many inspections because a call comes in or another, you know, during the day we could have 50 things happen. Same thing with, you know, the police. It's just, it's really hard when you have a whole day scheduled and five calls come in and then everything has to get pushed, it kind of snowballs. But I understand what you're saying about trying to get an estimate of it. Um, I mean, basically, what I would do is I'd have to get a total number of, of businesses, businesses yeah. and multiply that by 50. Mm -hmm. I think the administr if he had the administrative help, that's going to help significantly because yeah. with but me... This is, this is where I was actually going yeah, with it. With yeah. me, uh, I rely on Didi to do a lot of that paperwork and do the follow-up because mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the biggest problems we have is chasing the money. Um, and we have consistently the same people not paying mm -hmm. and if you and certainly if you have an efficient system of, of being able to not use him or any of these guys it's going to really increase it and I think it probably can increase significantly do we do all the buildings that we need to do absolutely no way mm -hmm. I mean we have be, well, there's, we would double ourselves easily mm -hmm. and more and be able to do it and so we have to pick and choose right now because we just don't have the personnel to do this kind of stuff and and go back and chase all this stuff all the time i think we've been very fortunate with some of the businesses because uh they they, they do follow through in most cases but we as you know we're always going to have that but i think that, have a when I look into what's happening here, 
it's this true deficiency of not having that administrative help is really hurting them. Right, and that's where, you know, the conversation we had at that financial management team meeting um, was really thinking about, again, going back to core competencies. Do we want to be paying, you know, Mike and Evan to be doing a lot of administrative work? And that's not the highest and best use of your time. However, certainly inspecting is because it's fire prevention, right? But if if we could help justify reinstating the administrative piece of it, knowing that that person was going to be, I know you have reports that need to be entered and all of that other stuff, but if that individual could really take some of that burden away from you and quite frankly manage the financial aspect of it for you, the town's gonna to be better off. I mean, effectively you would wind up paying, easily paying for that position and it may even wind up justifying more administrative help. Um, they could just do a spreadsheet and put, put on there what actually has to be done. Well, we actually, we did that when we first started with my position. Exactly. And again, it was, well, it, became, it became how much are we making versus that we're public safety and we're trying to go out the door. I understand inspections, inspections are really are, important. Uh, inspections are prevention. Yes. Yes. Prevention is public safety. So I, I, mean, I think agree. it's, yep. and, and it was different when you came on board, because I was on finance at the time, mm -hmm. and I remember the conversation was, oh, we don't have the money, where are we going to get it? Well, if we bring this guy on, then we can do these inspections and he's going to pay for himself. Well, we had much bigger fish to fry at that point. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, it it's exploded. a very different. Yes. But we're talking administrative staff. We're talking $15,000, not even, that you have mm -hmm. on here. Mm -hmm. um, and if only X, if you guys are picking stuff up and putting it down, I mean, it's almost like if, if you have somebody like a DD who's big saying, Evan, you need to turn around right now because you've got these five things to do today. And it's like, oh, okay. yeah. I mean, it's helping manage that whole Absolutely. process. Just answering the phone calls during Absolutely. the day. Absolutely. Um, is horrendous. We have, I can't tell you how many phone calls we have a day. We have, there's times when the dispatch gets inundated during the day when we have to issue burn permits. Mm -hmm. So would it be nice to have the office person that could go down and take that stress off the dispatcher? Absolutely. So, so that's why it was, it was very difficult to lose that position, but we had, didn't really have an option at that point, but I mean, but we, we definitely felt it. But, but what I'm but suggesting is that if we add that back in, we'd also want to add it on the revenue. She's looking at the revenue. The building <laughs> inspector creates He's aware of that. This man yeah, 100 times of what the salaries are in his Lord. office, you know. Yeah, the electrical it. inspector, the plumbing mm -hmm. inspector, the police department's getting involved more with the fees and, and uh, ticketing and all of that. I, I mean... Well, they have their own office. Yeah. Well, if, if administration. I just think if you can show a return on that investment for that individual, then it's much easier to justify the expenditure on that administrative person. And then if maybe if you go to the finance committee or whoever and says, yeah, we'll spend $15,000 maybe in the budget at the beginning of the year, but we're going to recapture an extra $40,000 in inspection revenue, then I, I, of course, you know. So I just, if we had something to look at, I think it'd be easier to justify. That's all. And I, you know, maybe you can't come up with that. Maybe it's too, too hard to... We can certainly do a projection, but again, yeah. the number one priority is, and again, I understand inspections are an important part of life safety. <laughs> you you but, taught me that. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> I did. However, when the, when the truck has to roll out the door to actually go to one of those emergencies, it takes time away from that. And mm -hmm. the volume of calls has mm -hmm. increased. Certainly, it will be great for us to be able to hand off all the inspector reports and not have to do it. It's and not allow me to hit so many other things it, as well. It's not like other fire departments where they have one person that just has to not worry about jumping out the door and going to a, a call. You have one person that goes around and does all the inspections. Normally the fire prevention guy is yeah. the one that's on Period. fire injured prevention. And is exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the, issue, the way that it goes. The issue too is, is if we are on an inspection, there is a medical and we don't respond, Correct. then someone's going to get sued. Okay. Yeah. And that's the only bad part too is that, like Chief said, our calls are ridiculous now. Mm -hmm. After taking over the ambulance and stuff like that, I mean, we're going to medical calls all the time now. and that Amherst would just go to when you wouldn't know some, on some of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're getting multiple back-to-back -back calls. So if Nick is out doing a home inspection, I'll take the medical call for them. And then no matter what, they're leaving, go do another call also. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the when you try and rotate, we'll call sound like it's, it's yeah. very substantial. Mm -hmm. And it affects me too. <laughs> yeah, it does. it does. It absolutely does. But you know, there's the physical inspection itself, but then there's the, it's the entire process. It's right. identifying who needs to be inspected, when they need to be inspected, what level of inspection is required. Then the inspection occurs. Then somebody has to make sure that they pay their bill. Oops, they didn't pay the bill. Then there's making sure that there's follow up to get the money in Correct. the door. Yeah. Somebody else can do everything Correct. other than yes. the inspection. And there's actually a spreadsheet that I've already started that has mm -hmm. the ones that we are doing yep. with the number of inspections that are required annually, with if they have storage fees involved, so if they store flammable fluids, that's in excess of the inspection. So there's, you know, that data has been started. Mm -hmm. It's just, again, it's somebody needs to manage that. Yep. Somebody who's really good. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, right. it's going to be a. I, I have a question. Do you think that the um, getting the ambulance and taking on that has been a good thing? Hundred yeah. percent. Yes. Um, yeah. Again, we're working as quite a team, and the response times have been cut in half. Uh, I've get I've been getting feedback in all the time of the professionalism we have. The tops of they want to be here because of the variety of calls, um, the folks that are working for us. The oversight is extremely strict. If anything comes in, we immediately address it. Um, Northampton loves coming to intercept us for mutual aid if our primary ambulance is out. Uh, they're very happy with it. Uh, there was some concerns up front with having a private ambulance service. Uh, Amherst, the folks, you know, all the that's all kind of quieted down now. The they love coming over and saying hello and boy, we miss you guys and. I think everything's been going extremely well, and they've they've really melded into the department. Great, they're helping us with daily chores. They're helping us with, uh, you know, cleaning up the the station. They're Mike Rock and I are actually discussing um, making sure that there's no excess fees, or you know, for the cost of toilet paper or dish soap or whatever that's involved with the station that we we can actually split down the middle uh, if both of us are using it. We want to make sure that we're not incurring any additional fees. Mm -hmm. As part of the maintenance of the station, mm -hmm. we do have a contract for them to, you know, to house their people and park their ambulance there. But it doesn't include, you know, paper and all the other stuff. So that's yes. you know we're working on that. Well, yeah. I don't think there's any question that the um, service level has been equivalent to what we were getting from Amherst, and I think that the um, overall cost, based on what they're proposing to us is actually cheaper with us having a contract service based on the potential rebates and things like that. So I think we're in a better position overall than we would have been sticking with Amherst. So I think. And just today, for instance, we had a seven-year-old unresponsive. Of three and a half minutes it took the ambulance to get there. A lot better than that was for a seven-year-old unresponsive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me and Lieutenant Cook went to that also. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it was three and a half minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good time. That's what you want. Okay. So I will work on that. <laughs> I'm good. My colon can't handle this. I tied them right here. <laughs> All right. Thank you for staying. Thanks, all. Pleasure. You're feeling the love too. All right. Tim, you're on. So there was. Two things that I wanted to try to accomplish in this budget cycle. Um, the first one was what we've been talking about for the last couple of years was to actually create an ins inspections budget. Um, and one of the advantages of putting everything together on the same line item. Right now we have inspections, building inspector 241, plumbing 242, and gas 243. They're all kind of separate, but if we put them under one line item, we can put all the mileage together. We can put all the travel and uh, tuition together. So if one goes slightly over, because we never know from year to year what some of our uh, fees would be for that, especially with tuition, it seems to always seem to be going up. But we can probably help uh, cover that. I'm really looking at plumbing and gas because his budget is very small. Um, 
and every year we are increasing, slightly increasing the number of inspections. And so uh, again, as of last year, he's going to come up slightly short of from mileage. It was in my, it was all together. We could play around with that a little bit and give him what he needs. My if it was like that, my priority would be that he gets paid first for his mileage because he 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 relies on that line item for his. Uh, so. Again, I'd like to really look at that for the next year, making sure that we can go forward with putting inspectors under one roof. And I think it would be helpful. And it might be something we can, and I have talked with um, Board Health on the, the uh, Board Health inspector, because they're going to be transitioning, I believe, into something new very shortly. And that certainly needs to be looked at, in my opinion, uh, Board of Health for the inspections, especially with the restaurants. Because yeah. they don't do every one of them. Yeah. They only pick and choose. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is something that the town needs to really focus on. Mm -hmm. The last five years that we've been doing the sewer grease trap inspections, they found that there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of places where he's missing a, well, not whether he's not informed or, you know, as as me or you catch him, mm -hmm. that's when he goes in and inspects. So. Yeah, I I think combining it to a single budget is makes sense. There's there's no sense in having separate. It, it, it's all building inspections department. So why not combine it all under inspection under one services? Budget? We talked about it for yeah. six years. I've been on the board. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it it's all generating revenue. The town, all, all of those inspection departments. So why not combine them and save the uh, the treasure? The <laughs> I don't come up with uh, count numbers, and I don't know the logistics behind that. But it's not hard. I'd like to see that happen. Yeah. I think it would be a, a extremely helpful benefit for for us. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is um, Dee's position. I think this town has been extremely fortunate to have a person like her step into. Um, that position. Uh, she has certainly taken on more than her uh, first job description and she's she's done it on her own in a lot of aspects and she has brought forward ideas which has been more than helpful. Um, and I, she's not, in my opinion, and I've talked to Juan Joni about this too, she's not being paid what she really deserves. She's taken on a lot more. When she came on, we were just bringing on gas and plumbing. Now we have that. We have um, weights and measures. So we have a lot more. She also, which has never happened before, there's two things that are very important that she's been doing. She's been actually fielding a lot of calls and, and um, telling people what they can and should do. That never happened before. Generally, the call would come in and they say, well, Tim's not here, I'll take your phone number and he'll get back to you. But she also, the nice thing about those calls is she's always listening to what I say and understands how things should be said. And, and she knows even zoning. She knows a lot of the zoning. But any time that she does that, she comes back and asks, tells me, I've taken this call, this is what I've said, is it, all, it was it correct? And I mean, most of the times it has been correct. Sometimes it hasn't and that's not a problem. She, she always says, um, Tim will get back to you if there's any other issues with it. I think that's a, a really positive um, thing for somebody to just go ahead and start trying to do on her own. Um, but I, I really would like to see a change. I have given you uh, a new job description. I've given her a new title. I'd like to see that happen. Tim, in light of the conversation we were having um, earlier today at the department head meeting, uh, we obviously have this mm -hmm. consultant in who's going through this process. Um, and I believe we're trying to expedite um, some of that output you know, so that it can help inform this, this budget cycle. Um, 
I mean, I'd like to see see what he comes back with. I, I'm not. Anybody that's around town hall knows what Dee Dee does. So, you know, but I think. She's wearing a lot of hats. She's wearing a lot of hats. So, I mean, I'm inclined to, to certainly take your recommendation under advisement, but I, I'd like to also dovetail that with the work that he does. And it's there. Yeah. There's, there's, there's kind of overlap. Very, there, it's overlapping, it's parallel at the same time. Yeah. But then she also works for other departments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to factor that into it also. On, um, are you asking just for 30 hours for yourself? No. Right now, right now what, what I've asked for is she's under 25 hours for me. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I put it in, I put it in two ways for the, for the 25 and 30. I understand it should be 25 right now because they're looking, they're looking at using her uh, in the treasurer's. Mm -hmm. office and I and she wants to do that I think she fits in there well and certainly Linda can talk to that yes she's they're, they're mm. using her in multiple areas and, and we do have to work all that out and I and I certainly appreciate all the the uh, knowledge that she has and, and does for you it's kind of hard just putting a title on her as permitting coordinator when she has other um, I mean, there might be some other title that could go on there, and that's just permitting coordinator. Well, that, that her, her that title your, would be just specifically for your, for your under department. my department. Mm -hmm. Yes, she would have another title in the other two areas. The way that the um, consultant's approaching it is in situations like that, he's actually doing a multiple job descriptions for <coughs> an individual, and then then pulling that together to try to figure out where they fit in the organization chart and grid. Yes, Joe? Hi. <laughs> I think I better. The reason I'm here tonight is, mm -hmm. is in support of Tim's request mm -hmm. for DD. And just in terms of, you know, as you say, everyone in town hall knows what everyone's doing. Just in my observations in the 20 years I've been on the second floor, well, yeah, 20 years <laughs> on the second floor, I've always been up here too, and downstairs, and just seeing the change in that position from way back when it was secretarial. Right. It's not secretarial. Mm -hmm. It's not even at the level of administrative assistant anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, what Tim says about her taking care of phone calls and even people walking in, I can mm -hmm. tell you in the past, the frustration of people, because Tim's the only one mm -hmm. for his department and inspections, mm -hmm. so he's got to be out on the road a lot. He comes in and does his two hours in, but he's out. And people get very frustrated if they come in from out of town mm -hmm. without an appointment, and they do, or just come in with simple questions and don't get some kind of an answer. And I've heard that frustration. I've heard yelling. I've heard nastiness. But I haven't heard that now. Shame on them. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on them. Really, mm -hmm. it is. But <laughs> you can understand the frustration. 20 years they're ago, we used to have to come in on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was some <laughs> really yelling right. going on. So they're not dealing with that frustration when they're coming in now. They have somebody who can intelligently answer a lot of their questions because she's not just here. She's, she's bringing some knowledge of building inspectors' um, offices from other jobs. Mm -hmm. Which is more of a customer relationship. So this, Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. And there's also, but there's a lot of background mm -hmm. in knowledge that mm -hmm. she can answer questions, or at least lead them to what they need to do next, and not leaving them frustrated simply by saying, "We'll get Tim. We'll get back to you. Yeah. He's not here. Can't help him. Mm -hmm. That's not how." But do you, do you think? I mean, again, the point I'm trying to make is the reason that we're doing this whole town-wide effort is so that we can look at these positions relative to other positions. Exactly. I'm fully expecting that the outcome of that will support and my what you're trying to do. That, so that they don't make sure we just take titles, and I made that, you know, yeah. my priority when speaking to this, to, to Mr. Jacobs. Yeah. One title in one town does not match the title in another town. Right. Mm -hmm. That hopefully he is looking at what people are doing. Mm -hmm. But I did want to be here in support of Tim's request. I might be wrong in this, but my understanding is, yeah, I think the wage study is going to be fantastic happening. My understanding is that the, all those, that won't be happening, those, any changes to salaries or what, uh, positions won't be happening until uh, the fall. Right, well, what he's, so the way that it's laid out is the, the first 
part of it is the, the job descriptions, right? And it, like he said, anybody who has a recent one like this is obviously one you've really crafted, mm -hmm. is to make sure that that's being taken into account, but it will interview the individual and supervisors as well. Um, and then move from there right to the classification plan. So the classification plan is the piece that I'm trying to get to um, in this conversation, which is when you look at other positions uh, that are support positions. You know, some support positions, there's no decision making, there's, right, um, there may be, you know, primarily data entry, maybe some phone answering, that kind of thing, but the person doesn't really have any authority. You're describing somebody who's taking on responsibility and accountability, which you talked about today, right? Yes. So, you know, I think it would be good for us to have as much of that town wide piece then the third part that you're getting to is the compensation plan exactly which is a whole nother ball game and no we're not going to have that but at least if we saw the classification plan and it's consistent with what you're asking for that's going to be make i mean more sense. i'm that's i think that's where it's very beneficial to have both things happening now mm -hmm. but i'm worried about the compensation right. i mean certainly I mean, I don't want to brag, but we do bring in substantial amounts of money. I mean, I, 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 you can I, brag. <laughs> I, this year again, it's two hundred seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars, or two hundred. I'm sorry, two hundred fifty thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Okay, my expenses for everything that happens is one hundred forty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So there's a hundred thousand dollars there that you're is, generating for the town. I generate for the town, and I'm asking for a very small amount of that to put back to, to as compensation for somebody that's really stepped up and that's really doing a commendable amount of work at this point. Are her hours increasing versus what she no. does now? Just the same, the same. Uh, yeah, it would be right now. It will be the same. I, yes, uh, there was. You'll see one thing that says 30 hours, and I think that I would. I'm hopeful, and this is something I really want to work on this year with, with you, is I, I, the budget really needs to be looked at a lot closer to go in the future, and very soon, um, what's going to happen. And, and I think it's needed. And I think there, I mean, even with Willie, he's in, he's a different type of accounting. He's, he's in the enterprise fund. Is that the best way? right now. We brought it forward many, many years ago for a particular reason. I think that reason's gone and it might be good time to really focus on this budget, change it, modify it in a way that we all feel comfortable with. And that's why I need your support and your, your both finance and you guys. What is the best way? And I, you know, I really wonder: is the enterprise fund the best way? Mm -hmm. Salary the best way? Because you know, with with somebody like, and what uh, one thing I want to do this year is actually look at the number of inspections the guys are doing, mm -hmm. and, and like take for instance Dennis. He's a salary, but well, you break it down to hourly. We can break it down to per inspections. We pay Willie per inspection. Okay, right. how is that dollar figure compared, compared to everybody right. else around? Right. We need to start doing that. Again, yeah. I think this is the year to do it. I brought the fees up two years ago. Maybe this is the time, like the, the fees that we charge. Let's look at that. And I think this is a good year to do that. But at the same time, let's look at everything and figure out what might be better. And I'd like to do that yeah. this year. Because there's going to be some large changes that we have to worry about, mm -hmm. okay, coming up. Makes sense. I just had one quick comment that DD has also implemented providing us with permits. Mm -hmm. So there was a little deficiency on sometimes, like Tim couldn't always get us all the information. She now puts together a package and any permits that come in, we get a copy of it so we can make sure that we're, we're hitting those as well. And then, for example, just the other day, Tim, you know, again, we're talking about trying to get him out in the field doing the inspections, getting the money. You know, we had to do the new home and suites inspection, and he, he needed to be there at 8.30 in the morning. That's his office time. So DD covers that as well, so it's a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. for us, because sometimes at 1.15, when he's available, we're not. So that's, 
that's another good thing that it's allowing him to be a little bit more flexible when we can get these inspections in. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank There's you. a couple other things I really want to look at so what we can do because again, uh, my alternate inspectors, it's not working. And this whole state has a severe shortage of inspectors mm -hmm. and it's not working. Um, but I have some thoughts on how we can help in that. I barely can cover the time that I take off to do um, to go on vacation. Other than that, luckily um, I've got Tommy Quinlan to step up to help with annual inspections, but he only has one day yeah. that he can do it. I mean, and we work around this stuff, but th there can be some improvement. But I, I, there are a couple things I think that could help with that. Mm -hmm. Well, this certainly is the, um, no, the beginning of our talks for this budget. And mm -hmm. certainly can take under advisement everything that you've given us today with finance being here. And we can you know, look at it closely. Thank you. I do appreciate the time. And, but um, I really, really like uh, some good thought on it. What to do with the yep. Thank you. I would Thank just like to add that I'm a strong advocate when you have somebody extraordinary like that of paying them what they're worth. Because when you think about what would happen if they left, what it would do to to everybody's um, work life, um, I, I just think uh, that when you have really good people, you should pay them what they're worth. It would be very difficult and start consuming to get somebody back up to speed on that side. Thank you very so, much. Uh, what? Uh, to Molly's point there, uh, the building inspector makes two hundred and fifty thousand and his budget's only a hundred. So, <laughs> so we're looking at six hundred and eighty one thousand dollars. I haven't I haven't, you do I haven't seen any fire trucks driving out of the building inspector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at my <laughs> I just got something new. Yeah, he's got his new car, he's all set now. <laughs> We would like to hire one person just to absolutely just do inspections, and we can look at that also. Well, where they wouldn't have to be called out. I have think, to go on runs. I think that's what Timmy's looking at. With, with an well, I think he needs it. Yeah, I, I mean, I do too. Trying to exactly. do it. Yeah, 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 board of health, yeah. fire, building, plumbing, yeah. electrical. I mean, how many inspections did the board of health do? They they should be doing every they place be that doing has. A fair amount. They should be doing every place that has a uh, restaurant yes. or yeah. mm -hmm. concession or yes. anything There's else. There's a couple hundred that said yes. Say that again. Could be a couple hundred. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. 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 Seventy-five. You know, as we go through the budget cycle for looking at all these departments, um, I think that if you can, you know, for each budget, if you can come up with, uh, I think what Molly was getting at before, if we were to spend this much money, we can capture this much revenue, and that it will pay for itself and more. That's you know something we can sell to the, to the taxpayers. So. I think we're and, and the thank you, gentlemen, yeah. for coming in. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good point. Okay, all we have to do tonight is sign the contract for the senior center. Yeah. Vote on the increase. Yeah. So you cut the you cut the contract, right? I do. All right. So I sent around an email explaining how we got to the situation where we find ourselves where we have to uh, increase the, uh, the contract amount by $9,450 plus the $94 uh, bond increase. So you approve the budget at um, $4,653,300. And because of the change in the um, plumbing sub-bid, which has been endorsed by the, uh, advised by the Attorney General, uh, we now have a contract of $4,662,844. Our construction budget is 5657300 so you're, you're well within that amount. 
make a motion to approve the change uh, due to the subcontractor uh, correction. You have a second. Okay. Any further <coughs> discussions? Councils reviewed the contract and signed off on it, so. Council's happy with it, yeah. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unanimous. I have uh, one more thing. This is uh, in relation to um, the CMAC grant we want to do for the Valley Bike Share. Um, it has gotten gone through the TIP subcommittee, but it now has to go to the Joint Transportation Committee um, to for review. Uh, and in the process of this, Valley Bike asked us to contact our JTC representative and encourage them to attend the meeting uh, that they're having to talk about these grant opportunities. In that process, we found that we do not have a JTC representative. Um, we thought for a while it was a, a, rep a state rep, but it's not. Um, so we need to nominate someone to uh, be that representative for Hadley. I'll offer myself to be and that I'm representative. So if you do want to nominate sure. me, that's fine. I, I can go to this meeting and find out what the JTC is all about. Yep. Um, but yeah, so right. I don't know if you guys want to Call do that while we're. Sounds, sounds good to me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for volunteering. Epstein. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's your baby. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anything else this evening? Uh, just on the senior center, we're going to be having our construction kickoff meeting this Friday at 10 a.m. So it's moving. Oh, you just sign it. Great. Okay. Um, I guess I have just a couple of condolences this evening. A uh, Joan uh, Patroquin. Who that is, um, but condolences to her family. Uh, a Gerald A. Yell, which is Dee Dee DeBrisi's father. Our condolences to Dee Dee. Um, so sorry for your loss. And Martha Hayes of Leeds. Um, that's Susan Kowalski's aunt. Um, actually, she was a friend of, of course, she was a friend of my family in yep. Northampton also. Right uh, a long time. So uh, condolences to Susan. And anything else? Most Yes. Um, I would just like to, to, to tell you all about uh, something great that happened for the town. Uh, small great, but uh, the Mother's Club has a donation program, and <laughs> they, that's coming again on another day, but the, the Mother's Club has a donation program, and you are allowed to submit your request to them, and um, we did to uh, get a laptop for interns in the Senior Tax Work Off program. And the Hadley Mothers Club very generously has donated $500 for us to purchase a laptop to sort of get a pilot program up to have this laptop here in Town Hall for our interns and our volunteers to use. And, and I, just, I just wanted to let you all know about that really nice thing that they did for us and how thankful the Treasurer's Office and, and, and your office as me are to them for to, to donate that and um, I'll bring it in and let y'all see it as soon as we have it in house. I've uh, ordered a little sticker for it and everything and just really thank you ever so much to the Mother's Club. And I, I did want to mention, I know I, I went like this to you, but the uh, Mother's Club is celebrating 75 years this year and uh, we would like to do a proclamation uh, for them. They're having a function on May 1st at the uh, uh, Holy Rosary, um, Holy Redeemer. Oh, I'm way back there, aren't I? Holy Rosary, <laughs> years ago. <laughs> anyway, so there will be a function that day also to celebrate the 75 years of um, donating their time and efforts and uh, monetary things that they've done throughout the town, uh, both to the schools and other organizations. So that's good. Uh, congratulations to them on 75 years. Mm -hmm. 
proclamation will be coming up in April. Yes. It's on your schedule. Thank you. And just speaking of things coming in April, we have an annual report. Is there a dedication? Oh, yes. Yes. If you want to do it, or I can do it. Go ahead. Well, um, we're still accepting nominations for the dedication of the annual report and the Fred Oakley Award. Um, I've received a couple, but nowhere near as many as we normally do. Um, I'd like to bring that to y'all at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the few I have received, I would really love it if more people would t make nominations. Um, so if they email me at info at hadleyma.org or call the select board's office with their nominations or tell any of you and you could share with me, I would appreciate it so we can mm -hmm. acknowledge people in town. I've had one call today, I guess someone stopped uh, to nominate uh, Ed Dukovitz. Yep, I received his nomination today. Okay. Yep. Can it, can it be maybe an employee? I mean, I've only heard the wonderful things about Dee Dee from all different angles. Mm -hmm. How about, you know, something? I believe. Jenny I mean, Boy of the Year. Yeah. She, she was recognized, I think, she, the year she retired. I think it was when she retired. She retired. She was a lifelong citizen and worked for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can, yeah. I can think of an employee too. Yeah. that mm -hmm. might benefit from a nomination. Mm -hmm. um, someone who's been on the top floor for 20 years. Yeah. Um, I, I could think of that person. And, and all that she does for the town, above and beyond. Um, so that that if if we were looking at a town employee, I think that that, that Joan Zusko would be a, a phenomenal mm -hmm. nomination. Mm -hmm. If that was what you were thinking, no. Well, I, I was thinking Dee, Dee but that's me. Oh. I think that's wonderful. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. Absolutely, I think that's wonderful. Okay. I only Good said point. Dee Dee because they kept mentioning her while in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did not. No, no, no. I put okay. Dee Dee's name down too. I just. No, no, no. I I think. That is a great idea. <laughs> I'm going to put my head down. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? I, I thought there was a, a, a goodbye to the Hooker School scheduled. Is that oh, on the sign? Ten. Is that coming no, up? March 10th. Yeah. March 10th. Yeah. 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 This Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I knew it was coming up. That's right. So. Yeah. Take yeah. a tour. Yeah. Last. Say goodbye. Go down memory lane mm -hmm. for those that went there. You yep. could also see if Mine you're interested in any furniture or, or anything. Mine are senior central or Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get a or preview Mine are housing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, St. Mike's housing. Where did you? Were you in the uh, Burton Street? Oh, you were in Burton Street. Street for you. You had my aunt, cousin. Motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye.